now. All right, hello everybody. This is McCall here, and welcome to episode three of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. If you're wondering where episode one and two are, well, that's because they happened offline and can be found sometime this weekend over on ELH Mark One's YouTube channel, where you will also find this episode and hopefully several others in the future. But uh, without further ado, I believe that uh, Commander Dolrum of the space station has the log today. First officer's log, star date 82396.2. We've been at Deep Space 15 for three weeks now. Uh, adjustments to this new secluded life far from the hap uh, far from the normal happenings of Federation space. Uh, it's happening slowly, but everyone on the station is in good spirits. Exploration of the Borg Transwarp Hub has begun by our slip near slip near class scouts. This hub seems to be a spy seems to spiderweb out across the galaxy. Current estimates uh, put the total number of exit points close to 1,100. Uh, current Federation technology makes the return trips very difficult. To aid in this, we have begun constructing gates at exit apertures. Three have, of these gates have come online thus far, and I am excited to see where the exploration takes the crew of the station. On a more personal note, after three weeks uh, here at the station, it uh, we're finally finding time to sit down and have a family dinner with my husband and kids. Uh, we've all been super busy with the setup of our new home, and we've been seeing each other in passing more rather than spending some time together. It'd be great to see how my own family is adapting to this new environment. All right. So on that note, our first scene will take place in the uh, quarters. The family quarters for Commander Dolrum and his family. And, uh, so the first thing that hits you, uh, Commander Dolrum, when you enter the fairly spacious for a... Well, the, the quarters are, fair, are much larger than what you're used to on Starbase 24, I believe it was, um, as the this class of station is, uh, well, much larger than that one. Uh, the first thing that hits you on your way in is a, a smell of one of your old favorite uh, dishes from home, one that you haven't had while out here yet. Um, as if right on cue, your husband Apatu, who is a Ryzen, 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 right, or right, you know. yeah. Uh, wa wanders out of the uh, uh, dining room area wearing that silly apron that he always wears while making dinner, even though it's just out of a replicator. Uh, he comes in, gives you a quick hug and a kiss, and says, Ah, welcome back. Welcome back. You will be pleased to know that the first... Uh, that, ah, that the first... Um, the first harvest of a Jakku fruit has... Uh, has ah, I can't speak this morning. I'm sorry. Uh, the first harvest of jacku fruit has been uh, harvested, and you know, married to the um, person who's currently overseeing that. Guess what you get to have for dinner? He smiles and winks a little bit. Well, let's see what we what else we have. Sounds interesting. All right. So we have uh, three children. Um, so it's yourself, Apatu, and three of the children. Uh, Zyler, Bodag, and Vayan, if I'm pronouncing the names accurately. Yep. Okay. Uh, to put players on the spot, uh, does anyone wish to play either one of these characters for the seed, or shall I just roleplay for people? Um, I don't mind seeing you flex yourself a little bit. Let's see you talk to yourself for a little <laughs> while. I should not have made that an option. Okay. Say <laughs> la vie center this for stream there we go all right so if i'm getting all of these guys figured out right so van who has been pulling uh, volunteer nurse duty at the uh, at the local infirmary um has taken the first plate for herself um her brothers kind of give her an eerie look or a put upon look and she just sort of smiles in that silly uh you can't blame me i'm the youngest look 
Yes. I'll just look over and go, ladies first, gentlemen. And they just say, yes, dad. Or Bodeg looks, yes, dad, we know she's your favorite. <laughs> I did not say anything about favorites. I love you all equally. They just, just sidearms Bodeg and goes, yeah, we, we, but we all know it's true. I know what you're thinking, dad. As her half beta Z. Uh, empathy talent kicks into play. Apatu just sort of takes all this in stride and says, Don't you have seniority here, Captain? Or Commander? Have I ever had seniority in my own family? He smiles and goes, No. 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 Tell me, no, how, that... how's the day going? Did one of those Not... uh, saw one of those new Slipnir things fly past the quarters? Is another one going into those? What are they? Those gates? Yeah, they're exploring the gates. They've found well around eleven hundred exit points around the galaxy. It's a really fascinating piece of technology. It can also be dangerous. And uh, Zyler says, "Well, you know." I'm always up for more adventure, Dad. Let's go. Um, I even got a bit of a hand-to-hand -hand training combat with that Ember lady. Holy cow, she flattened me in three seconds, but man, was it an experience. I have yet to have to spar with her. I'm trying to bide my time on that one. <laughs> uh, Bodeg just sort of sits quietly, nursing his food for a bit. Ah, uh, Apatu... No, seeing that uh, quickly s refills any plate that is quick that is getting emptied of their contents. Mm. So, um, Bodeg looks up and goes, uh, "So, Dad, um, out of curiosity, why does do? Can I take the Starfleet stuff out here, or do I have to go all the way back to Earth?" Well, in theory, it'd be going back to Earth uh, if you enroll in the Academy. Um, however, being thus, this far out in no man's land, uh, we might be able to do some things here. Uh, we can do field commissions here at the station. We can get you all the training that we can provide here. But if you want to go the officer's route, you'll have to head back to Earth. Why would I want to be an officer? All you do is stand around and talk all day. That's boring. Hey, now. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, not. Some, sometimes you get to hit and blast things, too. Zyla goes, well, yeah, that's why I want to be an officer. Just going security first, because phasers are awesome. Right? Am I allowed to be... Is that something that I'm allowed to say? Yes, but as long as phasers aren't the first resort. No, if you go by, mas by uh, Master Ember, usually yelling, then charging bef and knocking them unconscious while they're giving a response is the best way to do it. Apparently I have to talk to her about that. No, just, uh, she, she's fine. I mean, that's what her team is for. If she sends them in first, and then she deals with anyone that's too hard, like those Vin like those Vandian smug smugglers that came by a few days ago. Oh yeah, those. <laughs> Pain in the neck. Vayan is just sort of... Ah, she's poking away at her food, not eating much. You know, if, if it's alright with you guys, I think I'm going to head out to the Eclipse. I'm meeting, meeting some friends out there. All right, that, I'm fine with that. I turn to Apatu. Apatu just he smiles, nods. If you need anything, dear, don't be afraid to call. As uh, soon as she is about halfway out the door, um, Bodag says, "Are you sure it's not that boy from Ops that might be there?" And she just gives him a she gives him a look that makes you glad that you're not telepathic Dalrum <laughs> he sort of winces 
He goes, okay, okay, ow, ow, okay, fine, fine. Nope, I'm not going to ask again. Not, I'm not saying anything. At this point, Zyla just doubles over laughing. I'll chuckle. Her, to her credit, um, Vayan just decides to... Her, her, her expression stays as neutral as possible. She shakes her head and throws on a quick, oh, quick overcoat before stepping out and says something about men. I turned to Bodeg. So your sister, a little bit more powerful than you are. Look, Dad, it's just I'm... She may be. She may have a little bit more mental juice up here, and she. But believe me, I'm far smarter than she is. I can disassemble and reassemble, probably most of the things in this place, any far quicker than she can disassemble and reassemble a body. Not that. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that either one of you is smarter than the other. Your talents are different. Your skill sets are different. He just shrugs and sits back and wolfs down another plate of another half plate of food before finally uh, passing the rest back to Apatu who quietly and graciously adds it back into the uh, the bowl to add to recycling. So, so Bod- Bodag, what are you doing around here? Well, to be honest, Dad, you know, it's not... I haven't really... F- found people to that are around my age that you know do what I want to do I'm hoping you could you know flex your commander muscles and I don't know put me assign me like down to the as a junior engineer is that a rank or maybe just put me in the shuttle base because those things look fun I'll see what I can do unfortunately being out out here we're not exactly around people, especially young people. Yeah. That's... I mean, all the young people are like, you know, the ones out there, they... Lots of families, but most of their kids are like 10 and under. Very few teenagers. Or, and those that are older or that look cool have things like duty and that uniform that you wear. Yeah. We're still adapting and hopefully more families with more people your age will be coming um Zyler just, oh sorry I'm interrupting I was just gonna say uh it's just with the station being this new it um we'll just take some time to get people out here yeah have you just tried asking someone said uh Zyler pokes in that's basically how I've made friends on the security team. I mean, they don't let me play with the phasers or things yet, but at least I get to spar and practice a bit in the gym. Good way to work out some of that aggression. And then he playfully flexes, plus, you know, these. Apatu sort of goes slightly red and deliberately turns around and starts dumping stuff in the recycler. I'll just smile. Zyler, you've always been a lot more outgoing than your siblings. Can't help it, Dad. I don't have their... Uh, their brain power. Probably for the best. I don't want to read what they're thinking about me. They're twins and half betazo- betazoid. I don't want to experience that telepathy. He smirks. Well, look, I'm... I'm glad of that, Dad. Really, really glad. At least it's quiet. But if you don't mind, I'm going to head out and play some Parisi squares with the uh, with the folks in the in uh, Hollow Sweet C. Don't hurt yourself. No, no, Dad. We have apparent. If you if you listen to the propaganda coming out of his mouth, you have one of the best trained med- medical doctors in the in the service. Um, my sister is a nurse and there are way too many empty beds in the main infirmary I don't I think I'll be fine 
as long as you don't end up occupying one of those empty beds. She goes, I can take care of myself, Dad. I am fully aware of that. You have fun. He'll head in quickly into the bedroom, grab his um, Parisi Squares kit, and bolt outside. that Bode goes he looks around and goes well he looks up and okay I'm obviously getting something between you two that is kind of gross I'm just going to go into my bedroom and look over some of the technical manuals for this slip near for this slip near class ship maybe one day I'll actually get it inside one I think I know the people to talk to And as he as he heads out into his room where he can hypothetically close off his thoughts, uh, he leaves you and a patu alone in the dining room table. And he looks up. We c- are you sure that this is the best environment for the kids? I mean, they're literally adults now. We could send them to any academy we wish. I mean, I yeah. get keeping them close by and obviously they are welcome within my life as long as well until I die it's a bit cramped we gave them the option when we moved out here they wanted to come and experience the frontier life as it is in being in a new station it just takes a little time to adjust he shrugs yeah Speaking of adjusting, how has your new life around here been going? Oh, um, he beams. Oh, it's pretty great, actually. The We've been able to cultivate some of the seeds that were found aboard that alien vessel found a few weeks ago. Uh, with luck, we'll be breeding legitimate uh, Lasai Expanse brand food within the two weeks or so, assuming it's edible for our uh, for for most humanoids' digestive system, but my understanding is that was a trading vessel, so probably? I mean, never hurts to see what we can find around here. This is new part of space, and your job becomes just as important as any of ours. Oh, yes. The works of Neelix has been a great assistance in cultivating alien foods found along, found along the journey. Neelix was a very good resource for Voyager. Yes. Thankfully, we have working replicators and a power supply that is most likely not to... that will not die out anytime soon. And I've heard the uh, that Mozzie chap makes a pretty mean uh, set of spirits in the bar. I have not been able to get to the bar yet. Maybe you and I will have to go there here soon. Oh, well, Commander Slapons. Well, Commander, he says playfully, slap on some comfortable clothes and we can go and not only annoy your daughter, but have a relaxing evening out at the same time. No, I think that sounds like a wonderful idea. Splendid. And with that, we we shall cut to scene to the captain who is in his ready room. Yep. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Captain's office. So, Captain, you are busy burning the midnight oil. Alpha shift has ended about two hours ago. Uh, Beta shift has taken over ops. And you are in your office working over some last-minute details before calling it a day. Um, The Klingons are finally set... have finally repaired their vessel and are prepared to leave first thing tomorrow morning. Much to, every, much to everyone's relief, um, their chief engineer Lachal has been indicted in no less than five counts of um, destruction of station property and inciting violence. The only reason that she hasn't been confined to Brig for long periods of time is the sooner that she gets out of your hair, the better, pretty much. Sure. Yeah. And without her, the the Klingon ship will not get fixed. 
Mm -hmm. due to threats of violence made against people offering assistance. Anyways, uh, there is a chime at your door. Uh, quick question, because I know who this is going to be. Uh, have we had any communication from the Vitars at all about the... What was the name of that? Uh, the Togalal. Bungle? Have we had any communication with them about the Togalal, if it has done anything, or...? Uh, the Vitars have been fairly quiet, and based on what little you understand from the records that they've given you, they kind of prefer it that way. Uh, they're, mm. they're pretty much a self-contained government unless things require okay. them to um, stick their necks out. Gotcha. Yeah. So there is the chime. Uh, it pings a second time. Enter. And in steps Master Chief Ember. Master Chief, have you come to hand in your resignation like you've talked about before? Well, if you're going to let a hologram make such sweeping security decisions without any sort of repercussions, probably. <laughs> well, the one thing I want to get out of the way first is... Oh, hold on. Oh, no, I didn't mute myself. Cool. Why is it that you have such a negative attitude towards holograms? He, Galen, being who he is, hasn't done anything to harm any of us yet. So I want to know why you're discriminating against him. You are familiar with my service record, yes, sir? Um, let me go ahead and look again here. I've read over some of it, but not exactly in a lot of detail, so please enlighten me. Well. Long story short, two reasons. First, as you may or may not know, since holographic uh, projectors are standard on most ships and stations these days, one of my previous installations, or not installations, one of my previous assignments on the Ophion, the Ophion A, let's just say that the main computer was infected by a virus that spawned uh, quite a number of, uh, I guess you would call them emergency security holograms that proceeded to slaughter half the crew. And the only way we fixed it was myself literally ripping out the main computer core because our engineers couldn't do crap. Second reason, I teach at the academy, or I used to teach at the academy, and part of standard operating procedure is you teach them how to deal with rogue holograms. It is literally my strongest and most intense training that I give to new recruits. Because not only have I experienced it in person, but holographic personnel are indicative of a larger problem. On the first case, that seems more the fault of the virus than of the holograms. And I'll tap my communicator. Uh, Dr. Galen? Galen here. Uh, would you mind coming up to my office and bring a couple of your medical students with you? Very well. I'll be there in a moment. Yeah, he'll show up whenever the time is appropriate with a couple of students. I fail to see the point of summoning the doctor, let alone his students. <sighs> well, just to confirm some of your suspicions about that biogel pack that he used to help us communicate with the Togalal. And I assume at this point Galen shows up. Yep, there is a chime at the door. Galen decides to be polite instead of just immediately beaming himself in. <laughs> Enter. Captain. Chief. Now, um, Galen, you can confirm... Can you confirm the information that was on the biogel pack that was used to uh, help us communicate with the Togalal? The biogel gel pack that was used is one that helps speed up information processing. It's not one of the data storage component ones. It's mm -hmm. used to design the processing speed of the computers with fuzzy logic. 
much like how you take a guess. It's designed in that capacity, not to store information. The tricorder, however, was uploaded with the translation matrix. And as far as I'm aware, the tricorder has limited access to ship systems or starbase systems. And I'll look to the two students that are with him and just be like, can the two of you confirm this? The two quickly share a look to one another and one says, yes, sir, I am. I was there and Rami even blocked it from interfacing with the computer core when it tried, sir. Very good. Now, Master Chief, um, now that that's been safely confirmed, and I'll turn to Galen, the next time that you decide to try and make first contact, as it were, Galen, please try to run it by either the Master Chief or myself first. Understood. Uh, very well, unless you have something for me. Uh, Galen will turn to look Amber and, and just bow his head slightly. Like, I do apologize for not proper conduct. I will make sure to endeavor to ask permission next time. If there is a next time. She just sort of humps and folds her arms across her chest. <laughs> now, as in terms of the Togolan Vitars, we haven't had much communication with them in terms of resolving if the reparations that Togolau has started making have been working, but we're working on getting that through. And now, Master Chief, I understand that not... I understand your concerns with the similarities between the Togolau and the Borg that they might share, but quite frankly, we know nothing about them save what we know from the Vitars. I feel like the next time, once we... Excuse me. Uh, have better contact with them and better research on things that, quite frankly, we don't know. I think that'll be a better time to make the call that you were trying to before, but we have to do our research and come to a conclusion that way. We can't come to one based on connecting some similarities. I do have a bit of information about the uh, Togolau. Uh, it's a projected theory on their possible evolution trait. While oh, at please. first, while at first they seem like the Borg in terms of assimilation of uh, other uh, entities, organic nature, I believe now once that they have achieved sentience, like we have witnessed, the next step would be to simply procreate or asexually separate. I do not believe they will actually start to manifest on individuals or through colonies when they could simply divide themselves. The theorized step for them would be rather interesting. Their division and understanding and learning could propel them to a next evolutionary state within 100 years. They may simply go from organic to energy and beyond. This has been observed a few times with on, within Starfleet's short runtime. A very good example was the unknown alien entity they had nicknamed John Doe on the Enterprise D. He was an emerging evolution of his species. It is a possible theory, but at the end of the day, it is just a theory and a guess. But from everything I've seen, I don't think they will become hostile. It serves no purpose to become that regressive. So let me get this straight. You want me to sleep better at night because you think that this won't happen. I want you to sleep better at night just because it's good to have a good night's sleep. Sleep is for the weak. Sleep is mandatory for the flesh. Maybe for some of you. But that's beside the point. Captain, I perhaps I've not been very clear on this matter. 
had we not been in the middle of intense negotiations with a first contact alien, I would have put my foot down and pretty much refused to act based on general order number one. We have not only accelerated the growth of a previously unknown species using our technology, but I, I don't care what the, the hologram here says. And I, out of character, I specifically say the hologram. I do not say Galen, the doctor, etc. I don't care what the hologram here says. We have opened a can of worms and trusting that we're not going to have another Borg level threat on our hands. You saw how quickly they adapted, how fast they grew. What's to stop them from growing even further? There's nothing. We've let them go. And literally tomorrow, they could show up tomorrow in a cube that is a kilometer cube and kill us all. I understand your concerns. And I feel that as little as my opinion matters to you, we gave them the best start at sentience and self-awareness. It is from that point out of our hands, yes, General Order 1 was breached in a sense. But at the time, we do not know it. they were going to evolve into a sentient state. What I have to say next, sir, and I say this to the captain, is best said between you and I. I will reserve my comments until that time or an ask specifically. At this point, these medical students are getting very nervous. <laughs> I'll, 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 you, you can go. They breathe a huge sigh of relief, and after giving a quick at attention nod to the captain, quickly vacate. Anything else, Captain? <sighs> Nothing, unless you have questions for me. He'll just look to Ember and his smile will fade and he's like, no, that's everything. Computer transfer program. And with that, he vanishes. And again, without even prompting, Ember walks over to one of the control panels, takes off the panel, manually pulls the plug on the hollow projectors and says, good, now we won't be interrupted again. But as I was going to say, Captain, I understand why you brought him in there. But again, uh, perhaps I'm not being very clear. It is my job as station security to always assume that the worst will happen. And everything I just heard shows that he knowingly and willingly violated General Order 1 on a hunch that it would turn out all right. But for all we know, the Togalau could have turned into a station-sweeping uh, nanomachine gray, gray goo scenario. Even if they didn't go bored, they still could have reduced this entire, entire station to nothingness. And the fact that he's a hologram, I know full well, means he's not going to be disciplined for it because holograms are never disciplined. And I'm... Understanding in that concern, but if we assume the worst all the time, Master Chief, and I understand that it's what you have to do with your position, we don't get anywhere. If we don't at least give some species a chance and give them a positive head start like we did with the Togolau, then quite frankly, we'd probably be at war with each other all the time. There's a difference between making first contact with a new species and walking up to a petri dish, dumping a tricorder and a bioneural gel pack on it, and then suddenly becoming surprised when that petri dish is trying to talk to you. There, there's a world of difference. I understand that, but if we look at things like the... Oh, geez, I'm trying to come up with examples. <laughs> Like the crystalline entity with the Enterprise, they did what they could to communicate with it, but in the end it had to be destroyed. Well, it had to, but 
the doctor who had worked her life on the crystalline entity had decided to. If we didn't give these Togolau sentience, then they might have kept on going with what the Vitars were concerned about, and then I would have agreed that we would have needed to destroy them. But even though we can't r read them emotionally, I think the Togolau expressed some form of remorse at what they did and wanting to give reparations for it is it made me see something and as the forefront for Starfleet in this expanse we have to keep any relations as positive as we can and the fact that we can even fix something what seemed as hosp hostile between the Vitars and the Togolau, if we manage to negotiate some kind of peace, then I'd say we're making a hell of a head start in what we're doing here. While I am familiar with Directive 010, again, I all I will say on this, sir, is that if you want me to continue being station security, you need to listen a little bit more to what I'm saying because I don't think I'm making my point clear enough. We can't just be acting like classic uh, Starfleet is or is supposed to be out here. We are years from traditional backup. If something were to happen out here, we're on our own. I, I think that's pretty clear. And I'm not saying we have to go full uh, military or we have to go full you know, closed shell operations, but at the same time, there needs to be better caution. There needs to be something less optimistic, as hard as that is to say, because I know Starfleet's all about being optimistic, but at the same time, how many times has that optimism gotten us into trouble? I don't think I need to start quoting Stardates at you, sir. And that you're right, and honestly, for... <laughs> A captain, I'm fairly young, and I'd like to think that optimism is what gets us everywhere. And while being young, yeah, I'm probably going to age very much by the time my first year at this station is over, and honestly, I hadn't taken any other options into consideration. I just wanted good diplomatic relations and, and that was it and I apologize if that goes against some of what your beliefs are it's a start at least and I don't mean to question your authority sir let me be perfectly clear on that I simply wish to temper you into a better captain the last thing I want you to do though is turn into a Kirk or a Janeway because Lord knows how many times people have had to clean up a Kirk or a Janeway mess. In fact, I think we're still cleaning up for Janeway, last I checked. And he'll kind of pull up something on his uh, one of his data pads, and that it would seem you're correct in that. Well, uh, thank you, Master Chief, and... If some of my optimism has seen like stubbornness in your eyes, I apologize for it. Again, I would rather me be harsh now and not have to say I told you so, rather than after shit has hit the fan and I have to say I told you so. It's fair enough. Um, unless you have any other concerns to bring up with me, uh, you're dismissed. I actually had one, sir. Please. As ironic as it is, I did believe, at least before the doctor showed up, that there might be some use in the holographic armband technology I jury-rigged together during that last spectacle. It would allow the other officers, or senior staff at least, to interact with the uh, systems of the station uh, should they be 
you know, nearby the station, but not necessarily at a crucial console. Hmm. It's certainly something that we can try. Um, unfortunately, it seems like Peric had to leave us for other projects, but once we get a new chief engineer, I'm sure you can bring that technology to them and maybe it can become quite useful for us. Very well. Oh, and I turn to leave. Another thing, Captain, you are due for your training session at some point in the next week. I'll have to come down then. Mm, make sure you wear your padding. And then <laughs> I leave. Master Chief Ember has left, and I know that you wanted to head down to Astrometrics. Is that still a thing you'd like to do, Captain? Uh, very much so, yes. Okay, then let's head to Astrometrics, where, as always, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett is currently working away at stuff. Let's see. We are... Okay, Stellar Cartography... Okay, uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett, you are happily still ciphering through all the data that you've received both from the Vitars and that was recovered from the uh, the Scorpi ship that was recovered a week ago. Um, busy collating everything. Much of the data from the ship itself has been corrupted and you've spent the better part of your last week trying to recover bits and pieces of it and collate it with readings that recent ships have taken of the area. Needless to say, I don't think you've been happier. Uh oh that's like a dream. <laughs> uh, the door hisses behind you, and in walks the captain. captain. Lieutenant? Uh, um, how has sifting through that information been going? Oh, definitely a complex task here. Um, a lot of the net, or a lot of the information was a bit patchy from the recovered Scorpi ship, so I've been trying to overlay their star charts with our star charts, with the Vitar star charts, uh, some of the readings that the Klingon ship brought in. They we're just trying to patch everything together I and mean, get a better sense of what, uh, of the layout of the quadrant, both in terms of astrometric phenomena and in terms of different political gradients. I'll tell you, though, sir, I'm really looking forward to getting some more from those uh, slip nears. I'd love to actually really start building a bigger picture of what the what this new is going to look like once we can start safely traveling to the other side. I'm excited by the concept as well. Um, where is Ensign Errol? Um, uh, hmm. not sure if she was supposed to be on shift. I didn't actually review the duty shift this morning. I think I I I said the loud part quiet there, so I panicked. It's I okay. uh, that turns to a, a pad to see if he didn't actually overlook something when he was saying up the duty shift and just taps away furiously. Uh, you realize that Alpha Shift ended about three hours ago. You could have gone off to, you know, eat food or whatnot, but no, science takes priority. Oh. Uh, I I tend to fill up on coffee, sir, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, especially with this blend. I produce the, co uh, the empty and somewhat cold, or, well, mostly empty, but somewhat cold coffee cup at this point. It's a blend infused with cinnamon, a bit of orange peel, a pinch of cayenne pepper. This is, gets you thinking, acclimatizes one's palate to spicy foods. <laughs> yep, that sort of thing. Um, I, I guess someone should have been down here at some point. I don't know who's scheduled for beta shift. Um, Me? Rami? Yes, Captain? Who's scheduled to be working in stellar cartography or science for Beta Shift? Um, that would be a character I haven't thought of yet. Uh, 
that would be uh, Lieutenant so-and-so is in charge of Science Shift Beta. He is currently in the science ring setting up a lab 42 c uh, for geology support. Oh, yeah. In that case, no one's going to be around here for a while, but that that's fine. That you know, I'm. I'll work. <laughs> well, you oh, should probably just... leave and get yourself some sleep because, well, I've heard that some people are going to be out going out into Slepnir class scouts, and maybe you'd like the opportunity to be on one of those. I'll uh hmm. Marcus had not considered this possibility. I don't know about sleep, sir. This is my third one this morning, uh, or I guess it's afternoon now, station time. Um, uh, I, do you, is there are there missions on the docket, or like, are we planning on sending it? If you want me out there, sir, then I'm perfectly happy to. I'm enjoying just playing with this new little tool I've got here, tapping the console. Well, if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to go. I'm sure Lieutenant So-and-so would be able to keep things running while you're away. Um, looks around the, the cavernous astrometric lab. I... <laughs> It has been a little while since I've had field work, and I felt, uh, I feel honestly kind of foolish in hindsight that I didn't be myself and uh, Ensign Aaliyah off the last time we had that little bit of excitement. Uh, uh, what I wouldn't have given to uh, watch that thing eat that gel pack that spin the bit on the scuttle but here sir i i don't know exactly how it works and i'm not sure that would work precisely with a fungal based species such as that um however it, it, you may have a point sir uh field work would do me some good i can look get the uh duty roster i suppose oh oh yeah I, i'm gonna uh, he quickly taps on the console and like basically, you get the save option menu, and he, he clicks that. Yeah, I might run to the mess hall. Uh, is there anything uh, else that you might, needed, Captain? Might uh, consider that in order, but uh, unless you had any other questions, then no, you can leave. Okay, all right. I, I mean, unless you wanted to see any of the work that I've been doing here, I'm sure that I can pull up uh, something interesting. It's all perfectly interesting in my mind, but uh, I... It'll be a little while before I can put together a report, tie a nice little bow around it, uh, have something on your desk, whatnot. Um, Talk I'm... with his hands a bit more. <laughs> I'm fine. I can sure I can pull up the information myself. Uh... Please, go eat, Lieutenant. Well, and Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett will walk out the... Uh, he will walk through the... there and just get underway to... Uh, the um, nearest mess. All right. And or restaurant. Maybe his quarters. Uh, let's see. This far down, there's not much in the way of mess halls. Most are either on the boulevard area, or there's a couple mess halls up near the crew quarters. Oh, so many options, so many places, and all a commute. <laughs> oh. uh, I guess I will. You know, I haven't been to the. Uh, I haven't been to the civilian decks that much and definitely realizes that that would probably mean a decent crowd of people he also realizes that it's inevitably going to be much busier and that will mean more people and he doesn't like the thought of that so if any unique civilian food places have moved in then he's probably going to explore up there first uh, the one that's come in recently was Peric's brother actually Maza a Bolian chef of who's started earning a reputation on the station for 
uh, interesting takes on human t- on human food, mixed with spices and other ingredients found around the Alpha Quadrants. Uh, he's also apparently got a fairly lengthy drink menu if you're more a spirit folk. Oh, I I am going to need to sleep at some point, probably in the next 36 hours, or at the very least, that's what I might need if I do get a mission, so booze might do the trick. Time to head up to the uh, to uh, Maza's, or what was the name of the restaurant again? Uh, the Eclipse. Uh, computer, boulevard deck, and as close as you can spit me out to the Eclipse. Absolutely. Okay, so we are... Let's just have a small scene in the Eclipse, because you know, we haven't actually hey. seen that yet. So... Uh, let's see, station QRST. There it is. The Eclipse, a nice trendy nightclub-style area with a large dancing floor for those that want it, and a fairly good amount of soundproofing for those that don't want the dance floor. Nice. Soundproof booth it is. All right. Um, you walk in and uh, your first thought is, oh wow, this is a lot of people. Oh god. Uh, I've made a huge mistake. Second thought. I'll, f- I'll say that uh, he'll, he can see if he wants uh, Michael in there. At one table you happen to see um, the representative of the Breen, uh, Michael Jensen a human augment who has been on the station for a little while, and apparently I need uh, to update McCall's uh, token, but I will do that shortly. Um, question on that. Yes. Um, how familiar are is the rest of the crew with uh, the arrival of the Breen human augment? Uh, and peop- oh god, Oop. he's grown massive. Uh, people know that... He- no! Uh, people know that uh... A Breen has entered the station. Uh, people know that it's a human for some reason, but what the fact that he's an augment is probably just gossip that is has been discarded. Kept you also on the the cap, or you also see Commander Dolrum and his husband. They are a cute couple, but I'm not going to say anything because it... there's. Um, let's see. Yes, uh, counterintu- er, counterintuitive as it says for the role play, but most in character. Are there empty sound birth booths anywhere? There are indeed. Um, well, much of the. Excellent. With the mass recruitment drive that Starfleet's been doing, a lot of the new officers are fairly young and therefore more interested in dancing or other youth-type activities. Oh. Those, uh, those youth with their beats and shouting, and I'm actually only 29, but I'm just not into that crowd. Fair uh, your, your butt barely hits the seat before a uh, the blues-headed patron of Mazi Perrick quickly um, materializes beside you almost as if he had a holographic projector which he doesn't hello hello greetings welcome to the eclipse I am Mazzy the proprietor of this establishment can I offer you anything first drinks on the house okay well in that case recycled water is definitely not my pick uh, let's see oh uh... brave am I feeling? Probably not that brave. I'm actually... Let's see. I am just going to do a fluff roll to see how brave I am feeling right at this moment. Has any objection there? Go for it. And I'm I'm just going to do a straight daring roll on that. No, I'm I'm not uh, feeling that brave at all. Um... Let's see. Oh, what is that one? It, ah. There's this one. Uh... Anyway, have, have you got any like trill-based ales or trill? Uh, 
believe we happen to have some berries on some buried wines. Let me just go back and have a look. And he steps behind his bar. He makes a grand show of running his hands all over the uh, bottles of spirits before finally setting on one. Ah, I believe you might find this of any of some interest. And he'll bring the bottle back to you. A uh, they call this the Atomi uh, wine that has been apparently st uh, in still since uh, 2208. He shrugs and says, Ooh. that sounds like a good enough year for me. I, I'll... I'll try it. Fantastic. And he'll pull... Uh, the wine appears slightly blue in color. Um, as the... As it fills up, you, you do get a aroma, an aromatic palette of fairly sweet berries. So think of like blueberries or strawberries... And it fizzes oh. ever so slightly. I'll, I'll, I can do a sweet wine. Hmm. <sighs> Commander Bert. Dolorum, um, you, you not only noticed that Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett has entered, um, Michael Jensen has been keeping you at in his peripherals all night, and your daughter has is doing her best to completely ignore any family in the building. I've taken note of uh, Jensen over there and then continued to have my conversation with Apatu, trying to ignore him, but still keeping an eye on him. All right. Okay. At the end of the shift, and fully dressed in casual, because he's requested it, uh, Jaren Naya enters the establishment and pulls a seat up at the bar. He orders something, I believe, quite stiff. Yeah, um, Peric, make me forget where I am. Peric gives you a knowing wink, as if this isn't the first time you've asked him that question in the couple weeks he's been open. Right. <laughs> so oh. you, you want the Klingon blood wine surprise, huh? I tell you, this is going to kill you if you drink more than three of it one night in one night. Well, then I'll have to be careful and just drink two. Pour one out. He shakes his head. And he'll give you a glass that... <clears throat> he mixes three different liquids together. One is obviously blood wine. The two are in uh, steel... Con are in uh, some sort of steel... Con ah! Steel containers that if you look hard enough, you might be able to uh, read various chemical warnings on and safe handling instructions. The whole thing radiates a giant puff of smoke as and those that look around sort of applaud very briefly. And then he gives it to you. And he just sort of rolls his eyes, smiles, shakes and shakes his head. As you reach towards it, you Naya realizes, oh yes, this is the familiar warmth of the glass. Um, how big is the glass? Just like vine glass size, or what is it? It is roughly a half, so it's about 200 milliliters, so a half, I am, my alcohol is killing me. Um, probably half <laughs> a Coke can worth of liquid. Okay. He'll just kind of slowly sip at it. Um, and why don't you send one over to that gentleman over there, and he'll point over towards Jensen. I want to see if, for his tough exterior, if he can actually take it. Peric just says, very well, I'll add this to your tab. And Of course. Yeah, this time, um, thriving on the applause of last time, uh, Peric does a little bit more of a showmanship pour timing the exothermic reaction of the uh, uh, of the uh, drink mix to time with the t when the beat drops more people are suitably impressed and he'll have his one of his servers uh, bring it over to Michael Jensen 
Is he in the Starfleet uniform? Uh, he yeah, can he's be in, in casual. He can be in whatever you want him to be in. You're not All on right. duty, I suspect, so... Yeah. Now I have a comm badge? Uh, you would have a comm badge, yes. So Neo would have a comm badge on? Um, I, I suspect so. I, I don't... I think even in casual wear, most folks make it a habit to wear their comm badges. Yeah. So... Michael looks at it, and like does the waitress tell him where it came from? Uh, yeah, Nia didn't make any indication to hide the source, so yeah. He'll uh, take it and hold it up and look at you, and then pour it out. Ah, uh, the Klingon welcome. <sighs> People are trying their best not to pay attention to the hissing it makes as it makes it, as it as it starts to slowly eat away the carpet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you for your insides. <clears throat> and he just kind of pushes the glass he has back just a little slowly. Um, maybe something just a bit lighter. <laughs> the uh, music almost skips a what the the music almost skips a beat as master chief ember walks in i uh go straight up to the bar and uh what are the beats, man's chief? attention the usual give me a blood throne blood throne you got it now let's see if my memory serves that is some sort of weak blood wine of some sort <laughs> Maybe to me, but uh, to anyone else in this establishment, probably deadly. Ah, yes, right. One second, Chief. And he makes a show of putting on the thick uh, latex gloves and finding a, uh, finding some safety goggles before opening the fridge, saying, Caution, highly caustic materials within. Oh, and if you have one of those skull cups, I know you keep back there. I love it in that. You know how much it, how much time it takes for me to clean out one of these things? Uh, yeah. It's called put it in the replicator and have it sterilize it. You take all the flair out of things sometimes, Master Chief. It's my job. I am a professional buzzkill. He will. He shakes his head, but you see him smiling. Here you are, as the liquid that is still bubbling and steaming, although is oddly kind of cold to the touch. Yeah, and uh, I swing it down like it's nothing. Uh, Mazzy just shakes his head and goes, this is going to be a fun station, isn't it? Well, I mean, depends on what you do at this place, I suppose offense to that. I think I'm doing quite well with this place. Oh, no. I didn't mean to offend. I simply say that, uh, you know, there's only so many bars on the station, and you want to make sure your yours is the uh, correct one to go to, if you catch my meaning. Ah. Yes, I've been... I really do need to talk to Quark about what how he stayed successful for so long. But do you know that he charges by the minute? Yeah, I'm surprised he's not doing it by a second. Speaking of which, you, and I point at Jaren, what is that you're drinking? Um, it's a Klingon blood and wine surprise, and, well, this says something about the power of it, and I kind of point to the hole in the carpet. Has it started to eat through the metal, too, Thank at this point? Know. It's Okay. <laughs> And, uh, do you normally order those, or was this, uh, a gift from someone? Um, I order them on occasion. I wouldn't say it's my drink of choice, but if I want to kind of forget where I am, it's my go-to. Oh, so you're here to forget that. Wow. I look at Mozzie. Give him a little shock. Not even a shock. Give him like a milliliter of this stuff. And I point at my drink. 
very well. He'll pull out he'll pull out a couple thimbles that he'll use very gingerly to get the um, ingredients, mix it together, and pass the uh, pass the I hate to use the word drink because it's not really what it's meant for. It's like a small spill. <laughs> yeah. An environmental hazard waiting to happen, maybe. He'll pass it off. And, sorry. He'll pass it in uh, Jaren's direction. And uh, not wanting to disappoint the Master Chief, uh, he's going to, I guess, attempt to just shotgun the small amount of it. Uh, but call is the final to say here, but uh, I think a fitness security difficulty three would be very amusing right now. I do. Oh, I'm. Yeah, that would be a good. I'm a hundred percent down. Given the amount of times you force Skull to roll such checks, yes. <laughs> oh, he doesn't have a focus here. <laughs> uh, that's only one d twenty. Oh no, sorry, that's uh, Marcus. So, uh, yeah, what is no... the? What is the difficulty on this? Just like a difficulty one or what? Difficulty of three, let's say. Oh, Jesus. This is not going to go good. If you want to give me three um, for... <laughs> you can take dice if you give me threat. Sure. I'll, I'll give you... Um, I think it's two threat for one dice. It's... Oh, is it not like a momentum? No, you, have or... no, you have no momentum to spend, so you have to give... You basically give me more threat to add right. dice in this situation. Right, but I think it's still one threat, two threat, three threat. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I was thinking of using threat other another way. My bad. Yep, one threat That's for a... one dice. Then you know what? Sure, let's 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 go big or go home. I'll give you a max threat to get five dice. Okay, that I believe is six threat for me. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to go well probably, but that is two successes. And one... <laughs> oh yeah, beautiful. Oh. Just how I wanted it to happen. Okay. But he's melting a hole in their intestines. <laughs> uh, let's see. What what species was Jaren? Is he Trill? He, he is a Trill, yeah. Is he he's a Trill? joint Trill, actually. Okay. Rip symbiote. Yeah. He was a species. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, because jo the Trill symbiote allows you to withstand a little more punishment than normal than a normal person would. Um, however, your symbiote all of a sudden decides not to talk to you. Um, <laughs> all of the past voices, uh, you know, the past experiences and the symbiotic relationship that you've gotten used to has suddenly gone very, very empty inside your head. Um. Okay, that's not good. Um... Uh, Dr. Galen, and I'll tap my commun communication badge. Galen here? Um, I'm going to have to come to sick bay really quick. I'll be, I'll, I'll be there soon. Understood. <laughs> and as he probably more runs, not walks out of, uh, the eclipse, that's what this place is yep. called. I'll kind of give a quick wave to what is it? what's her name? How is it said? Vian? Vian? Vian. He'll give kind of like a quick wave to Vian, trying to look confident, but obviously panicking. And he'll run to sick bay. She is a nurse. Yes. Uh... And the moment he runs out after that wave, I turn very pointedly to Dolrum, and I just give him a smile, a wave, and a wink. And I'm just going, dear God, what did she do to him? <laughs> uh, Captain. Uh, the um, After a long night of um, paperwork and chatting down at astrophysics, or astrometrics, I should say, mm -hmm. you're just about to enter your quarters for a long-deserved uh, evening of rest and relaxation when your comm badge chirps. Hmm. Uh, it is uh, Commander ah, Commander Jail, who is a who is the Betazoid commander of Beta Shift. Commander Jail to Captain. Uh, 
This is Captain Crawford. Go ahead. Captain, you're going to want to get up here. Some Something's gone wrong with the gate that the slip near uh, scout ship went into. <sighs> On my way. And he'll find the nearest turbo lift or wherever that is to get the quickest way to ops. Alright, I'm afraid we don't have a token art yet for jail, but that will happen soon enough. Uh, you enter the... Uh, you enter ops. It is a... not as busy as Alpha Shift is. Um, a fewer of the stations are manned. Lieutenant Darval seems to like working double shift, so he is still in the fleet control. Uh, Alright. What seems to be happening? Uh, well, Captain, the... <clears throat> Captain, about an hour ago, the slip, uh, Slipstream S3 entered Gate 1 as per, as per its plan. And roughly about 30 minutes ago, we started receiving strange power, sig power readings from the, the gate. And, well, sir take a look. He does some, um... Uh, he pokes on the console, and the holographic display in center of ops changes to be that of uh, gate one, which is the northernmost gate of the mm -hmm. hub. Where did the... What's happened? Where is everyone? Sorry, I've lost all the tokens. There we are. Ah, and as you can see, sir... Well, this is what it looked like uh, about two hours ago. He'll pull it up, and everything is as one would expect. There's the green energy that's surrounding the gate, as one has become accustomed to with Borg technology, because Borg thrives on green. And this is what it's become now. Uh, he'll bring it up. And the, um, the gate has sh visibly shrunken within... Th or the vortex within the gate has shrunken to about half of its diameter and half of the power uh, half of the green field is now dead I'm, un I'm unable to account for the failure of the power up here sir however it appears to be getting worse as this is what it is now but 30 minutes ago we would only lost about a quarter of the gate hmm. we also sir while the slipstream, or while the slip near is capable of navigating home through slipstream, we have a bracer class building a, the fourth gate, which would be trapped out there, sir. Based on um, my projected uh, calculations, we'll lose this gate entirely in about three hours. Oh. Well, this isn't good. Um, you have any? theories as to how we might be able to fix this and get it back to normal? Well, sir, when we haven't really taken any teams down to do a full exploration of one of the gates uh, infrastructure, as much as I hate to say it, sir, there's little we can do up here. Uh, a way team may be in order. All right, and think I have an idea of the crew I'd want to go there. Um, Captain Crawford to Commander Dolrum. This is Dolrum. Looks like we might need to prepare an away team. Uh, come up to Ops when you get the chance. We'll fill you in. Aye, sir. I'll be up there momentarily. Dolrum will appear. Yeah. As soon as I get my layer management straight, there we go. Dolrum appears, still in his casual outfit. Captain? Commander? Um, it appears that we're having issues with the gate, uh, Lieutenant Darval, if you can relate to the commander what you just told me. Of course, Captain. Based on at, uh, roughly two hours ago, we began noticing a slight decrease in energy uh, per, 
uh, maintaining gate one. Uh, the energy drain has only increased at, in a linear fashion, uh, if affecting the gates uh, or limiting access to the gate. Rough estimates indicate that the gate will be fully depowered in about three hours' time. We have uh, Bracer 2 is out building a gate uh, down one of the transport paths, and Slipnir S2 is currently out navigating the, s navigating the slipstream portals. I see. Uh, do we know what the problem is being uh, that is causing this? Uh, insufficient data, sir. Uh, station sensors have yet to uh, fully uh, are yet to fully map or read the uh, transwarp gates. There's far too much energy being emanated for an accurate sensor scan at this distance. I see. I. Uh... I agree with you, Captain. I think we need to have an away team. And I think that, if you're comfortable, you should be the one to lead it, because, quite frankly, I think my place is probably better here. I tend to agree. <laughs> Any ideas that we should take? Oh, let's see. Well, there are some options. There's... Uh, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett could be good for science, and... Hmm. Seems like we have someone who's quite the expert in this, and Ensign Usha, but... We'll have to figure it out quick. Those are the only two other than you that I can personally think of right now. Uh, Ensign Mudd... Uh, as a con officer, if we're taking a slip near, I want somebody who knows how to run it. Mm hmm. And All right. How about uh, Specialist Nea, considering they're pretty decent in engineering, we might need their help over there, too. I'm perfectly in conjunction with this. Uh, let's get them together and get them through that gate and find out what's going on. Aye, uh, sir. I'll assemble the team. Commander Dolorum to Nia uh, Usha Mud and Lieutenant Barnett report to the shuttle bay. And Dolorum... Aye, okay. sir. That is one, two, three, four, five. Yep, so everyone has a character. Do you guys wish to bring anyone else along? Oh, who am I bringing? Um, oh, um, Nia? Um, I would be doing uh, Oh, you're, you're Nia. Nia, of course, I'm sorry. Uh, you'd be Mud, Ensign I Mud think. Would be the is the chosen pilot, if that's who you wish to play. If not, you can bring along someone else, and I can have Mud in command of the ship. I was going to bring Jensen. Okay. So, uh, everyone assembles at the flight deck. Including my Michael Jensen, who has decided to show up for whatever reason. Jensen, I didn't realize you were going to grace us with your presence. That's a fun way of saying that. Something's going on with the gate. Um, as far as we can tell, there is something wrong with the gate. We're not entirely sure. We're going to investigate. Excellent. I'll be there to observe and uh, make sure uh, any knowledge gained is properly shared with all our allies. As I have no doubt, you will help us if we need I'm it as well. Maybe. All right. <laughs> so everyone is going to be on board the Slipnir vessel. And the Slipnir Vessel exterior, uh, for those watching on stream, will look something. Uh, I have it here somewhere. It's gone. Oh, well, it's a very sleek looking ship. Uh, think Delta, Choir mix, Delta Flyer mixed with uh, Federation Starfighter. Uh -huh. Oh, that's right. I'm in the wrong bloody menu. There we go. Slipnir class scout. 
That's what it looks like from the outside. And on the inside, it looks like this. All right, so uh, Ensign Mud takes the uh, slip near S4, uh, leaving the station and heading into the eye of the uh, the eye of the transwarp ne transwarp hub. It is a very bumpy flight, and everyone is recommended to buckle up at all times. It will take roughly 15 minutes to get from the station to the hub itself, if there's anything you'd like to do on the way. Let's see. I, for one, uh, from the uh, while we're on the scout in transit, run a scan directly from the scout, or try to get sensor readings relayed from uh, Cerberus Station, so as to... Uh, see if I can make some sense of the raw data that we're getting right now. Understandable. Okay. Um, so that would be sensors plus science with a difficulty of three, given okay. the prox given the fact that transwarp hubs are not very easily scanned. Uh, ship can assist with uh, sensor science as well. Fair enough. Um, question, would you be more for doing the former option of just getting a direct scan from the scout? Um, yes. I, or would you prefer to uh, pull data from the station first? Um, let's see. That would be two different roles here. This is true. That's perfectly fair. Um, I'm going to get what data I can from a sensor scan first, and then I will pair that alongside what the station has for analysis. Um, for the task uh, for the task itself, would that be a reason and science role for uh, Lieutenant Selvin Barnett, or would that be insight? Uh, let's I think go we... with uh, reason science, and then That's good. sensor science from the ship. Okay, and in that case, sensor operation applies. Focus, and then... Oh, nice. That's two successes already. Sensor, science. Ship always gets a focus, if I'm correct. That's correct. Yep, ship gets a focus. All right. Here's a three. So... That's three. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let me pull up my notes on this. And let me pull up the... All right. As you're doing that, Marcus is just tapping away fur uh, furiously at his console. Um, losing the Transwarp Network would be... A, that would be a big bad in his yeah, book. It would be, wouldn't it? Why else am I here? Precisely. Now, this is the... Um, so this is the next time we're activating Mr. Nia, so you can upgrade him yep. if you'd like. Um, okay, so three successes. Hmm. Uh, what you're seeing, the... So it's obvious that the... Um, bah, it's obvious that the Transwarp hub requires a significant amount of power, like more power than a typical starbase can provide. Uh, if you were to ask um, Usha for her analysis, uh, she would happily tell you that the uh, structure generates an estimated amount in the Yeta uh, watt uh, scale of power to, uh, to keep even this part of the gate, uh, gate network op open and functional. Uh, the fact that Half of the net, half of this gate has gone dead, and appears that, and it appears that more sections are going dark by the second, well, maybe by the minute. Uh, it appears that this may has more in common with a rolling blackout than somebody cutting a uh, power, uh, central power c cable. 
Um, it's actually probably a good thing that the gate is still open, if even in a reduced capacity. Um, let's see, sensors. Uh, tr turning the sensors to areas that have just gone dead, uh, you're able to make out an odd quantum fluctuation, but it's difficult to tell what might be the cause of it, at this even at this distance. Report. Um, it's difficult to say at this point, sir, but based on what I'm assessing, significant power, uh, and there's significant power loss across the station. Uh, I think we can rule out any sort of sabotage. It may be, it, there may be some issue with the, uh, the transport hub's overall power distribution, something in their power collection. There are, uh, I honestly won't know for sure until we get aboard. I am picking up some unusual quantum fluctuations, which I make anything of. Um, I might try Commander to with Cerberus Station. Uh, Nia, do you want to give me a hand here? On it. Um, so, Nia... Yep. Um, brief interlude between what happened between the uh, bar incident and now. Um, the complication I've given you is that your symbiote has gone into a bit of a shock from the types of chemicals that you were trying to poison yourself with from that drink. Mm -hmm. So it, you won't be able to use the joint trill ability until basically you, know, you have a couple scenes until you can use it again. That's the complication. Oh, great. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Anyways, right. please continue. All right. So, and uh, so, and so, we have got to figure out why and uh, why a massive piece of cybernetic alien technology is dying right now, and well. We'll do be we'll be doing the bulk of this when we get aboard, but for now maybe against what they've got, uh, what reading server stations got might give us a little more insight. Um, Lieutenant Sullivan Barnett to server station. Uh, server station, this is Commander Jail. Commander, we are collecting initial sensor information, and uh, we're wondering, can we? any of the raw data that you have from your initial scans it might help us compare uh, the data we are getting and see if we can identify this particular situation of course i will have rami compile and send you the data as soon as as soon as it's compiled thank you server station uh, so for this um i'd like someone to roll the station um Let's roll. Uh, let's roll computers plus science uh, for the station, mm -hmm. and then additionally, so one dice from there and one dice from the uh, slip near for uh, computers plus science, just to see how much data gets compiled and sent through. I've got the station that was computers and science. Yep. No, I already did the station. I can get the I scout. The, I meant the oh. scout. Oh, okay. You got it. Okay. 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 So one success. Um, so you, uh, you do get a decent amount of data coming through. Uh, the station was able to pick up a... It's a very noticeable uh, quantum blip that has happened let's say around 10 o'clock if you're looking at a one of the gates as a you know clock and from there the blackout started to spread slowly at first but picking up speed as it went um you're not sh uh the quantum blip has uh sort of diffused if that's a good enough a good term and is working its way around the power outage areas that's Commander just... Dolrum. Yes. I have a theory. 
proceed. Well, I won't bore you with the long story. So the short story is, best we can tell, Transwarp works because nothing travels faster than light, which quite literally means that the reason Transwarp works is that it goes through nothing, absolute nothingness. And that's why it's so quick to get anywhere in the galaxy or beyond. My theory is that that nothingness is now trying to bleed back into somethingness, if that makes any sense to you. I'm following along. Continue. Right. So if this theory is correct, then what we have to do is put nothing back into nothingness and in the process restore something that is. Any idea Uh, how? Well, uh, I could go out and push. I mean, that's always an option. A more realistic right, so that's option. A, that's <laughs> honestly physical for me. Uh, honestly, sir, uh, what would really help is getting into the central hub of the or the central area of the hub. But uh, last I checked, we haven't been able to get into that. No matter what, like transporters have been tried. Uh, we've tried physical teams, and no one's gotten into the central area of the hub yet. So what you're saying is we have to hack the Borg uh, superstructure to get into the central hub. Mud, set a course! Yes, sir. Heading to the center. Now, just for visual diagrams, I shall take you to the uh, main page, which shows the hub, just so that folks can get an idea where things might be. So the gate that everyone's referring to is the northernmost one here. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so and so far the power outage seems contained around this gate. Yes, that highlighted blue arrow, whoever drew that, thank you. All right, and so you wish to have uh, mud plot a course for the center area? Yes, because if we need to get in there to stabilize the power, mm-hmm. we're going to find a way. Well, it's a massive structure. Um, beaming uh, only the uh, central area is protected on tra- against transporters and stuff activity. All the arms and gate superstructure, you could probably find a docking port and or beam to if you'd like. Let's find a docking port. Okay. All right, where would you like to find the docking port? Again, around the center or somewhere closer to the problem? What do you guys think? I'm thinking the center. Oh, God, that's too thick. Uh, (laughs) But uh, that gate there, if there's any docking with the green. Okay. Sure. Very well. So, you... um, Let's have someone roll for mud, because you guys don't have a lot of momentum yet. So let's let's do a... Uh, that would be control con with a difficulty mm-hmm. zero to find and dock at a docking station. I got I can one. roll for him. Oh. You can do it, Galen. All right. Uh, focus, uh, Starship Pilot. That would work. <laughs> well, that's... It's good thing it's a difficulty zero, because uh, you have zero successes. Alrighty. Um, He's living up to his name as a mud. <laughs> mud takes to... Mud tries to, uh maneuver the shuttle and just as he gets in close enough to find a docking port the whole thing or the whole thing shudders and sheds another wave of gravity buckling everyone aside thankfully you're all wearing seat belts and i'm hoping lieutenant sullivan barnett has taken his uh anti-vertigo pills oh no i'm supposed to take I'm, i'm supposed to take it with food and i didn't eat food why did I only drink before I got here? Nia's probably not doing much better. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So, 
eventually, um, mud. Sorry about that, sirs. She just sighs and finally brings the ship in and pulls it alongside one of the docking hatches. So, what we're going to do is we're going to copy all the tokens here. Oh, I sent you the updated one for Jensen whenever you get a chance. You did. I will probably deal with that after this, but I'm assuming he's in full hazmat gear for, you know, Porg stuff. Yeah. And then we will go here. Okay. Okay. The Borg interior. Let's say Mud will stay on the ship just because of reasons. Is it because he embarrassed himself or anything like that? Sure. Uh, so to say that a transwarp hub structure is massive is an understatement. Um, the whole thing is probably continent-sized given that many of the apertures are large enough for Borg cubes to enter without even coming close to scraping their sides. So, it's an eerie walk. Um, you wander past row upon row of empty recharge alcoves. And the temperature and humidity are like that of a Borg vessel, which I believe are rather hot and oppressively humid. Um, if Ember was here, she'd probably think of it as close to home. Nope, but Usha is not the same species and therefore finds this entire experience very miserable. Jensen's perfectly fine in his uh, air-conditioned suit. I'm a reptile. <laughs> <laughs> following the uh, following the maps that have been gathered by your tricorders and the previous teams that have attempted to gain access into this central area, it's fairly straightforward. It's very... You can't help but feel that you're being watched, but there is literally zero Borg drones or remnants of Borg drones around. Everything is literally on automation, it seems. Lights are on, but nobody's home. Quite literally, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so you have entered the... Uh, you've entered the atrium towards the major central area. And the door itself is fairly unassuming at first glance, until you realize that it is roughly, probably about six meters thick, uh, solid uh, duranium, and has one of those annoying Borg adaptation f force fields all around it. And quick scans of the wall indicate that it is of similar construction. Hmm. I have an idea. I turn to Usha. Can we make our tricorders emit a signal that makes us look like a Borg drone to the system? I mean, we can certainly try it, but my instinct is more to just try and reroute the energy that's being put forth by this uh, this force field, just shunt it elsewhere. Uh, sort of like what uh, Picard did when, or I guess not Picard, but uh, Locutus advised Commander Riker to do, uh, sort of make them sleep, quote-unquote. If we can make the system sleep, then that would solve our problem for us. I remember reading about that in a history book. Didn't the ship blow up after that? Eh, details. <laughs> a big detail, bro. Oh. Uh. Um, then. And I guess Nia will start working on that? Okay. Um, so this is going to be an extended task. Uh, to attempt to get in. Um, let me pull up what I had written for this. As you guys, as all players do, tend to jump the plot. <laughs> okay, so 
Let me know if I'm missing any numbers from this. So this is going to be a difficulty of five. Oh boy. Um, this is going to have a work track of 19. Uh, resistance of... Or, I'm sorry. That's a magnitude five. Difficulty of four. Work track of 19. And a resistance of four. Oof. So I will write that down. Or, never mind. Thanks, ELH. You just did. Oh, boy. And what would the task for this be? So, depending on how you're attacking it. So it sounds like you're trying a science-y computer uh, shield rerouting thing. Yeah. So that is going to be... B, let's see. Uh, that is going to be. I want uh, insight plus science type task. I would, th or possibly insight engineering, depending on which focuses you want to have apply. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can get assistance from an individual, and uh, you still have no momentum, so you know you can give me more threat. <laughs> um. Hmm. I mean, what I'll say is that I'm rolling a 13 or a 14, uh, but I do have energy manipulation as a focus, so... Yeah, because mine would be a 13 if we did insight engineering. Uh, Barnett, what's your uh, insight science? Oh. My insight and science would be 15. Okay. I just have no relevant focuses. Unless archaeology comes up. I mean, this is... <laughs> Not a... Uh, particular in this like. instance? <laughs> well, let's do this. Uh, before we commit to this extended task, uh, would I be able to tell if the energy coming from the black box room is getting out to the spoke like it should be? Sure. Um, yeah, that's a difficulty one task of insight science. Ah, I minimized the stream window again. I apologize. E two successes. We got a momentum finally. All right. Huzzah. Okay, one one momentum. Excellent. So the as far as you're able to see, the energy coming out of the room all of the, it appears to be power generating energy as it always has been uh, the problem appears to uh, well wherever the problem is it's further down the line well sirs uh, we can certainly try and get into the master power generation room but my guess is that we actually have a problem further up the line Oh, uh, that does look, uh, peering over your shoulder to look at the tricorder, looks right, and yeah, might make more sense to tend to whatever the phenomena is, I suppose. Oh, uh, this is, would be a bit of a walk otherwise, I guess, uh, do we want, well, we could probably arrange a site to site, although that might be a little bit tricky given the, well, not just the distance, but the fact that there's much radiation and with all the Borg equipment around here, that might be just a tad difficult from the scout. Uh, Commander, I advise maybe we get back to the shuttle and just take a little cruise down there. Probably the best idea. We're running uh, on a tight time schedule. Yes, I should mention that an hour has passed, so that's now about two hours until the gate winks out of existence completely. Well, in that case... Hmm. If you want, with all the threat you've given me, I'm more than happy to turn this into a transporter accident episode. Oh boy! <laughs> Hmm. Sir, it, in the time, it, it, like, I'm 
crunching the numbers here and between that or like between what we've got going or between the time it took us to get here the time it'll take us to get back to the shuttle to cruise up even at a reason uh, well at a reasonable speed that doesn't overshoot the gate already print maybe it's best that we backtrack just enough to where the slip near can definitely beam us for or beam us forward i mean if it's easier than i could probably have been getting a little bit more fit with uh, the master chief's physical regimen so i could probably make it back to the shuttle pretty quickly operate the transporters and get us there a little bit faster but i yeah, I want to well, trouble him. Before we do all this, uh, I do want to try something. And uh, what Usha would have liked to attempt to do is, you know how in real life uh, they're both cable companies and electri- electric companies have sort of signals along each line so that if a line gets cut, they know where they have to go? Yep. Um, my theory is that the Borg have something similar so I want to try and tap either into the line itself and send a ping, and then when it stops, I'll know where the brake is, okay. or to see if I can access the control system and see if it knows where the brake is. Uh, sure, either would be a good, uh, either would be a good test, because the Borg have terminals everywhere. Um, so that would be probably an insight engineering uh, difficulty of one. Would you give me energy manipulation as a focus? Yeah, I'd say so. Well, there's uh, two more momentum for you. All right, more momentum. Okay. So you, um, uh, based on the distance that it is, it's fairly long in terms of meters. I haven't even bothered to calculate it out. But your rough estimate is where um, the... The first failure happens pretty close to the gate entrance itself. Uh, r- oh. Roughly where the quantum ping happened in the first, at the first uh, site, eh, at the first indication of a problem. Well, uh, good news, bad news. Good news, I found the problem. Bad news, it's literally back where we started. So there's that. Oh, today's going to be a long day. Alrighty, everybody, back to the ship. Let's keep, move quickly. All right. Actually, Nicole, I have a question. Yes. And this is why letting me play Space Engineer is a problem. Um, you said that this place is operational, yes? Meaning it's yep. running with the lights, the lights are on, all that? Yep. Do the Borg transporters still work? You've, um, no one's been brave enough to try them. Um, but they are probably functional. Going to try something. I pull out a small com badge and a tribble. Don't ask where I got the tribble. <laughs> and I would like to attempt to activate the Borg transportation network to see if I can beam it all the way to where the break is, or near it anyway. Okay. Um, so how Borg... Um, I'm basically going to say that the entire structure is basically a pad for a Borg transporter system. Just because they do it almost in every bloody episode. At least, uh, thanks Voyager. Uh, Let's see, so pad to pad, difficulty of two. However, because this is an alien technology that you're using for the first time, I'll say that it is difficulty of three. And for fun, I'll spend a couple threat and increase the difficulty uh, 18 to 18 to 20 complication range. Okay. Uh, would people be okay with me taking the three momentum to so that I can roll four dice? Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, don't have a focus for this one unless you give me like. No, I don't have a focus for this one. But it is my idea, so I will be the one rolling it because hubris. Uh, well, there's two successes, which is, and no complications, so hey. All right, uh, two complications. Um, uh, no, 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 no complications, no complications. Sorry, two successes, and I believe I set the task at three difficulty. 
Right, but yeah. the Transmore pub has to roll sensors engineering yes. and... Uh, yep, yeah, so someone roll me a d20, please. D20. Um, and I've... I mean, I figure for a Transwar pub, it has to have pretty good pretty sensors. Good. Yeah, I'll call that a success. So, yep, it makes it. And the Tribble materializes. And judging from the readouts, it appears that it has both been transported and not assimilated in the process. So, congratulations. Well, sirs, I'm happy to report that I have not bored the Tribble. Uh, if we wanted to get there immediately, we could go through the Borg Transportation Network. That'd be advantageous, although I... Well, question for later would be whether that trouble's been sterilized or not. Eh, doctor can fix that. <laughs> Let's just... You, uh, plot <laughs> oh. Well, sir... Uh, I'm be as this place as their technology might be the best way. So uh, let's see if we can get everyone as close to the. Uh, I would advise we use it. Uh, just make use of this here. Get as close as we can to this and try to, as it were. That's how it's going to be. Uh, same role, except now that Usha has figured things out, it will just be the standard difficulty of two. Yep, and someone with a better control engineering should probably roll if we've got somebody. Yeah, oh, he's see. got it. Yeah, He's got a control engineering of 15, so that'll be better. Mm-hmm. Does he have a transporter's focus? He does not. Oh, <laughs> uh, and the difficulty was what? Difficulty two. two. Okay. Yeah, he should be fine. In before, yep. yep okay. Well, you know, success. the Transwarp Hub can roll. Yeah. Uh, someone roll me a d20 for the Transwarp Hub. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, it appears... Um, I really should have spent threat for complication on that. Oh, well. <laughs> it appears that Usha's bluster might not have come to pass. The... You guys feel the familiar sensation of the Transwarp Hub energy taking hold of you, and then something sparks, and you haven't gone anywhere, I'm afraid. Oh. Did you push the red button? I specifically said don't push the red button. I don't think I did. Um, oh. I just pointed at the sparks. You pushed the red button! You know, I... Honestly, the, in a system as complex as this, the transporters haven't been used in some in over 20 years, and maybe something larger than the size of a softball was a bit too much, especially when that was five somethings. So, well, I'm I guess, guess the, I guess the good news is is uh, I'm happy to report that there's now 20 Tribble waiting for us when we get there. Oh, you didn't sterilize it. Uh, why would I sterilize a triple when I'm using it as a guinea pig? Oh. Marx is just going to, uh, like, rub his forehead at this. Can Jensen try something? Go for it. He wants to sabotage the defense grid. Or the containment grid. Just to make it shut down. Okay, um... How is this going to fail, huh? <laughs> uh, it fails by making the defense grid harder? Uh, Possibly. So what is your end goal from this? Are you trying to disable the grid ent- to enter the central area? Yep. Okay. Um, considering the hardened nature of such things, that will be a... Um, probably a daring, en- daring engineering, probably. Unless you can make an argument for control. Uh, nope, just daring to good. Yep. Daring engineering difficulty of four. Hmm. Uh, you guys okay if I give him some threat? Oh, please. Well, I'm just curious as to how this bypasses the extended task, because that's what the extended task 
before. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, if good they, question on that. Yeah. If he overloaded the defense grid somehow, then that yeah. focusing specifically on internal defenses that might impact the force fields in some way. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a good question. So we'll do. Yeah, daring and engineering would work against the extended task. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, try figuring like how to guess to move forward. Yeah. yeah. A couple ways. Well, sir. Try the transporters again. Back to the ship, or start running, and you might get there in a month. Well, sir, I think that uh, Commander, if it's all right with you, I'd like to just try and use the slip near to just beam us in as close as we can get, because that's that's the only way that we can get there. Really efficiently uh, at this point. I would agree. Let's give Mud a call. All right. This is Ensign Mud. Go ahead. Mud, how good are you at transporters? Uh, that's a good. Wow, we that wasn't a study I paid very close attention to in the academy, sir. But I can probably push the right buttons. I hope. You're not giving me a whole lot of confidence here. That's because I don't have a lot of confidence, sir. Fair enough. Think you can get all five of us relatively close to the um, uh, portal that's having issues? One way to find out, sir. All right. Uh, so does someone want to roll for mud? Because because you're now being beamed from a not pad to a not pad. I believe this is now difficulty four. Um, yeah, honestly, can... I think trying the board thing again would be better. Fair enough. All right. Um, yeah, uh, same difficulty as before then. Difficulty two. All right, and I guess our best bet's probably Nia again. Um, so you control engineering difficulty two. Uh, I'll give you a threat for a third die. Okay. Presuming that Nia and Usha just went back to the Borg console to start working on this uh, for flavor purposes, Lieutenant... Uh, or, well, Marx is basically going to... Go Jesus, up. come on. Would someone like to spend their determin... Uh, only, uh, yeah, support characters... Yeah, they can spend a determination if they have... Well, if they, if have, they have to have a value. Yeah. Which... But he doesn't have one, so... Well, someone roll the d20 for the trans war pub. We might get lucky there. Uh, oh, thank you. I believe would be a critical success, so that's one momentum. Huzzah. So, oh, for, for flavor, just real quick, uh, Marx is going to try and start explaining the intricacies of transporter targeting systems to mud over the comm lines. <laughs> and halfway through, you realize, you realize that you are now explaining from a completely different location. Uh, uh. And he'll kind of Neil just kind of like very quietly got it. Neil, Never mind. Uh, but... oh, well, our fully like... finest and brightest, fantastic. At first glance, the architecture around the gate isn't much different than that that surrounds the center hub that you just were at. Uh, lots of corridors leading in directions that you're not 100% sure where they go. Kind of maze-like. Everything is slightly claustrophobic. Um, there is a lack of recharge stations ar around this area, though. And there is... Um, anyone who has hair on their body notices that it is standing upright given the amount of static electricity that is flowing through this area. There is something that is a bit different, however, um, where you typically see green energy um, and green lighting all over the place. It's gone very faint, and there are lines of uh, yellow electric, sort of like a uh, exposed power cables uh, that are glowing in a sort of white yellow color uh, stringed uh, stringing along the ceiling as if someone is on some Christmas lights I'm immediately pulling out my tricorder and like giving this a quick scan okay 
Um, insight science, re difficulty of one, please. All right. And keep in mind, you are the science officer, so you get one free question. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's two successes. So that's okay, one so that's... Gained. All right. One for... Um... My, if specifically for my obtaining information. So, uh, let's see. So first of all, what you find out, there is a. Uh, once your tricorder adapts to the amount of excess energy and non-lethal radiation in the area, or electromagnetic radiation is the term I'm looking for. Uh, you are able to determine that there are uh, some entity what appears to be something that is out of phase it has been is sort of clamped wherever the uh, orange energy cable for lack of a better term connects to the uh, Borg superstructure uh, from this um, out of phase thing uh, you can see that it is actively drawing energy from the surrounding systems and adding it into its own. Uh, also, something that is odd is you do not see any tribbles. Oh, this is damn peculiar in other senses. Um, so, if I... Yeah, if you didn't already say this, I had a slight audio issue there for a moment. Um, but the the out of phase object that you were mentioning, yes. um, do, does it appear Borg in design, or is it does not appear Borg? Um, uh, is is that the question that you'd like to ask, or shall that just be part of the description? Um. Well, I. I didn't give it. I mean, I, I was didn't give the description just that it's an out of phase thing that is not visually readable. Your tricorder understands that there's something there, but can't give you a good readout of it. Okay, so but not, we I can mean, assume that it's not Borg. I'll give you that for free. All right. Okay. Well, so let's see. Object is out of phase. Um, Oh, there are there are things relating to this and uh, voices that spontaneously appear in my head. Don't be afraid to appear wherever um, you feel those channels are appropriate. Um, that said, um, oh, the uh, it as I gather, it's drawing. Or drawing power away from the uh, main systems. As is there any sense of uh, like is this object static in dimension or does it appear to be increasing in size as uh, more information is taken in, uh, or rather as all more power is taken in? So uh, it appears to be a static size. Um, however, you um, you do see that there are many of these at roughly five to ten roughly within seven meter intervals um and as each one uh each one let's say radiating from the source each one seems to be taking up a little bit more quantum or is projecting a bit more of a quantum instability than the others uh, as the prior one so they're getting more and more big for lack of a better term okay so so, Commander, I am picking up something very unusual as the uh, used to be some sort of object essentially siphoning power from uh, like from the network and it appears that the objects are multiplying into larger and increasingly complex um, of themselves perhaps. It's very difficult to get a reading through the unusual uh, quantum resonance field that they've got going i'm having to compensate a lot for the uh, for the ambient em as is um 
Suffice to say that it uh, looks like whatever's siphoning the, uh, the power here is, uh, well, suffice to say it might be responsible. Now the question becomes, can we get them to stop siphoning or get them to siphon from a different location? They have the intent to know that they're uh, siphoning indeed. We without getting much closer, sir, we won't be able to speak to whether it's something cybernetic or biological in nature. Only thing I'm fairly certain of is that it's not something that's necessarily something that isn't necessarily related directly to the station, or it doesn't appear to be Borg in nature. So we're looking at a foreign entity. Good to know. You guys start brainstorming. I'll report back to server station. I step away. Commander Dolrum to server station. This is Crawford. Go ahead. Well, sir, we seem to have found the problem. Except the problem is a entity of some sort is siphoning the power leading to this transwarp gate. I see. Uh, have you, has anybody come up with theories as to what can be done about it? We're brainstorming that now. <sighs> All right. Well, keep me updated, Commander. I will get let you know as soon as I know. I guess over with the with the with the people doing the thinking here. All right, Usha, Nia. Well, first off, if you want to take a look at my tricorder meetings here, I can get these along to you. But we've got hmm. and just damned peculiar. Interesting. So, um, now. Mr. Jensen, because you're in full armor, I'm going to say use give you this. Um, <clears throat> your suit's audio and visual receptors there's um, contains a great deal of uh, uh, audio uh, auto filtering that can be mm -hmm. employed, and I'm assuming that you're just sort of flicking through them at the moment just to see if you can find something that these. Uh, stupid Starfleet officers can't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you're noticing that the... that there is odd fluctuations happening throughout the... for lack of a better term, I'll just call them the yellow strands. Um, happening at the quantum level. Where it seems to be um, flickering in and out of uh, it's sort of flickering in and out of the, this universe, let's say. Similar to how folks from the mirror universe would have a different quantum signature. This thing is flickering quantum signatures like it's just drawing random numbers out of a hat, let's say. How long are they lasting at that frequency? Fairly, are not very, uh, they don't seem to be very stable. Um, and it seems, t some it seems to be a random period of milliseconds to seconds before it swaps over again. Alright. Well, I'm just going to use um, my tricorder, the brain version, and scan it. Okay. Uh, that would be uh, Insight Science. Uh, difficulty of two. Well, they don't have a focus, but hey, let's try. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you succeed that I'll let that succeed at threat if you're willing to give it to me. Sure. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I mean, we've given him a ton of threat already, so we might as well just give him more. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's not a good logic to go by. <laughs> I I don't recall us bringing any Vulcans along. <laughs> 
Honey, ivory dealers don't want more ivory. They have enough of it already. <laughs> uh, um, there, you're at the very... Um, just because of the the various uh, environments that the Breen Special Forces are you know, required to operate in, your tricorder automatically punches through a lot of this background interference like it's nothing. Um, hardened against EMPs and the, the like. There's there's a quantum signature roughly uh, 400 meters in in front of you guys, and it is moving towards you. Is my tricorder locking on to a pattern, like a, a, a set signature, or is it still fluctuating? Uh, this is a set signature. It's... I'm putting my rifle to that signature. Very well. And I'm just going to bring up my rifle and look to everyone. I was like, we have company. I'll... Wait, what? Why the rifle? I... Okay, um... Neo pulls out his phaser. Won't be much good, but he pulls it out. Can we just hold off for a moment? We don't understand anything about what exactly we're looking at. We're tr still trying to assess whether there's intent to this, the nature of that. Um, if I can... Uh, there is, just as soon as he gets to can I, there is a sound that does not sound like it's coming from a Borg thing. As this thing quickly rounds a corner. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it is definitely organic. It's uh, skittering around the, along the roof, and it is sort of flickering in and out of reality. Um, it's hard as a. It's completely solid one millisecond, and then it sort of goes translucent or transparent briefly. Oh dear God. Um, you notice that it, is, it still has one Tribble in its mandible. Oh. Well, we figured out what happened to the Tribble. Uh, I'm, I'm terrified, but I'm also scanning that thing right away. Okay. Um, this will be a daring science, because holy crap, that thing is coming. <laughs> oh. Fumbles with the tricorder. A with, a dis with a difficulty of two. Okay. Is, and uh, a xenobiology focus? Definitely. Is there a pattern I'm noticing for how it flickers in and out? Um, if you're willing See to... if I can figure that out. Oh, that was a... Did I give you difficulty one or two for that? I think... You gave me difficulty two, two so yeah, that's... So uh, yep. So, this creature is obviously some sort of spider-type thing... Uh, it is comprised mostly of um, energy. There is very little organic matter in it. Uh, the organic matter that is in it appears to just be in the center of its body. And it is flickering in and out of this universe at a very, very fast pace. Uh, it seems to be uh, wherever it touches on the yellow string, it seems to solidify just for as long as long as it's touching the yellow string and when it's when it's uh, skittering it takes it off the string it will go intangible it's it's almost as a uh, mind working extra fast between caffeine and adrenaline um thought of oh, it's it's like some sort of quantum tether that uh, that locks into our reality uh, um, let's see since that's one bonus success and I actually should have double checked this before I said any or rather before that last question but um, for the obtain information um, I believe that, that gives you so in addition to the one free question you get as a science officer that I think gives you one additional if you one additional okay. question for momentum spent to get momentum or to get a question. Right. So 
Yeah, that's I I gathered the obtain information spend. I just for future reference, I wasn't sure whether I had to spend anything in the first place if I generated a bonus success or whether it was just a free one regardless of whether I spent more momentum to do that. Uh, that's Yeah, if you generate the extra success, you can just give me the momentum you generate for the questions. Uh, the, as science officer, you get one free one anyways, and then... Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, let's see. With that being the case, I... It, like now that I have a firm sense of what this is based on the tricorder scans, I want to overlay that with. Uh, I'm overlaying that with the other readings that I took from my earlier scan. Would this suggest that there are, say, eggs or perhaps a hive of sorts forming in um, this part of the ring? Tell you what, given how close this darn thing is, um, I'm going to move everyone into initiative. And nope, you can okay. ask that when it's your turn. Right. So, let's figure out initiative in the system. Turn order. Are we going to roll d20s and then the lowest goes first? Uh, nope. Uh, that's why. <laughs> Thankfully, it, initiative's done a little bit better in, or a little differently in here. So we'll just add everyone a turn. And because you guys have given me so much threat, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this or not per the book, but I'm going to dump a bunch of it and give Mr. Spider here two turns. Oh, boy. That's yeah. fair. It's just keeping the initiative. All right. Turn. There we go. That should have two turns. Yes, it does. Okay. So uh, Starfleet, I believe, gets to go first. Unless you spend two threat to make the thing go first. As fun as that would be, I think because you guys know it's coming, I'm, I've am i already dumped enough threat to give it two goes per combat, so I'm okay with that for now. Fair. Um, I'm assuming energy weapons will have no effect on him. As a tactically inclined person. Um... Dolorum will stand forward and grab uh, a his uh, phaser and try to fire at him. All right. I believe that would be control plus security. Difficulty of two? I should have my combat sheet up and running for this. I'll give you a threat for a okay. third die. All right. I'll take that threat. I have bold security. Good thing I have bold security. Good thing you have bold security, yes. <laughs> oh, dear God. Dice just, not go just, dice just not going your way tonight, is it? No. Okay. Combat is there. Okay. So, so. I fire wide. Although I do have quick to action, so somebody else can go next. All right. <laughs> You try to attack it? I tried and epically failed. Shot went wide. It brick it bounced and went off uh, one of the cons one of the uh, one of the corridor walls. Jensen's gonna try and uh, shoot him. Okay. Now what's Jensen's brain rifle? Is it an energy based? Uh plasma. Plasma. Okay. Good to know. And it is control security. I believe so, yeah. Oh, security. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Tonight's the night. Also, uh, yeah, I think... Okay. I don't think... Yeah, this thing does not have non-lethal, so... Mm. Yeah, so that's lethal. Okay, fair enough. All right. Well, it's now the spider's turn. The spider is going to let out a small screech and is going to set a... I have his... I made a sheet for this thing. 
it is here somewhere. There it is. It is going to try to make a, let's see, that is a control plus security. Oh. Good. Oh, Good. that's a complication for it. Um, so I will let you guys, because I'm always the guy who tells you what happens on complications, what happens on a complication to this guy? Does he phase more into our reality? Sure. Um, but in making his attack, uh, the spider is far too focused on you to pay attention to where its footing is. So it loses... Con uh, Ah, so it tangles itself up in its own thread and is quite visible for a little while. So until the end of until combat rounds reset, it will take damage as a typical organic will. All right, um, Barnett, Usha, or Naya. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. I do not remember my question anymore, but we're yeah, in a firefight. Something about eggs. Um. No. I feel like this can wait till a little bit later, so I'll just keep that in. Uh, I will keep that information saved for now, and uh, at a phaser. Okay. Oh, uh, though so my security stat is just really bad. Let's see. That's one success, I'm afraid, and I believe you needed oh. two. Yep. Yeah. Wild shot. It's okay. I mean, You're the first person to roll with success, so wait on no rest of roll one. Never mind. Yeah, if you'd like to try spending your determination to re-roll that zero, you're welcome to do so. Oh, uh, let's see. I don't think anything I've got helps. Okay. I mean, unless you think, uh, let's see, nothing says home like recirculated air. <laughs> Every deadline can be overcome by caffeine and hatred. <laughs> Numbers are easier to work with than people. Nope. If the books don't help you, it's time to write your own. <laughs> uh, I mean, Internet, a that's book with you to throw at him, maybe, but... Uh... <laughs> I have a tricorder. <laughs> All right, well... Next up uh, is the spider's turn. Okay, so because of its predicament, we'll have it roll this. Security. Well, it makes it. No oh boy. Okay, Jensen, you are going to be as it. You are the closest target to it. It is going to attempt to roll the following. Uh oh. Can I attempt to step in front of it? Um, that's a good question. I don't think there's such a th talent or whatnot that would do it, but you are welcome to uh, tell you what. If you su succeed a daring plus command with a difficulty of one, I will let you do that. Would my survival focus come in to apply? This is literally against all survival instincts, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have a reason for doing it. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. That's two extra momentum. Okay, so you are going to take this. Okay, so. I, so. so I, as a Zindi Reptilian, gain one re, re, uh, resistance for uh, energy weapons. Oh, good. And uh, this is literally energy weapons. <clears throat> okay, so that would be three uh, damage, um, minus your resistance. Um, you find yourself in a sort of a paralyzed state as your synapses just sort of overwhelm the, yourselves. 
Um, so basically, uh, this is non-lethal damage. Um, you are required. So you are now basically caught in a web of its making. You now become easier to hit in the future. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and that's the spider's turn. Uh, Usha, I believe. Usha or Naya are up. <laughs> well, I have a question. Yes. Is it still in contact with the yellow conduit thing? It is, the yes. Web? Until, it's, until you guys are done and it does its next turn, then you can damage it. It's fully entangled in its own thread. Okay. Next question. Is that thread in any way connected to uh, certain people who just jumped in front of the webbing? Um, if you give me two momentum, you can create that advantage. Well, I, I basically want to make sure that they're not oh, connected. They are not. Okay. Then uh, you know how much they joke on Star Trek, the TNG episode with Scotty about souring the milk? Yeah, yeah I kind of want to do that here. Okay. I want to manipulate the energy via like a conduit nearby. I want to manipulate the energy going through the thread mm -hmm. so that it maybe either scares off this thing or it either uh, forces it even more into our reality. Ah, Okay. Uh, let's call that daring and science, or daring engineering, uh, with a difficulty of two. Gonna take uh, three momentum here, unless anybody has any objection. Nope. Well, oh, oh boy! Wow! So all those missed successes come back right now. Um, mm -hmm. So that this was is a difficulty of what task? Difficulty two. So you get four momentum for that. Jesus. All right. You rolled a one, a two, and a three. Nice. And a 19. <laughs> nice. Okay. So you rolled excessively well. Ah, so not only is the... Th um, so it begins to... Um, the energy manipulation that you're sending through it has turned the strands... They're now channeling Borg energy. Uh, instead of whatever the creature was generating. Uh, so the creature is... Uh, the creature is now in full reality, and it can't tie back to whatever it was feeding off of before, and it is scampering away. I mean, that's that's a win-win in my book. Hmm. Um, just do me, uh, roll me, uh, what's, roll, wh what's your, um, science, science for, roll me four challenge dice, please. Okay, oh, that's, wow, that literally matches the, uh, momentum, or the daring task. <laughs> okay, so this creature takes six points of damage in the process cool which uh that's the magic number I know, which i believe does knock it unconscious yep yeah okay so as it yeah so instead of it scampering away uh several jolts f shock through its body <laughs> and it becomes fully in this universe and unconscious although it is still alive well, sir, uh, we'll get you out of the webbing in a second, but there you go. One uh, spider thing. Oh. Thanks. Uh, I was not expecting to get trapped in the webbing, but I knew I could take a little bit more when it comes to energy. At this point... I'm going to tap my communicator. Commander... Uh, wait, no. Commander Dolom already came back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wrapped in a web. <laughs> yep. He's About right here. <laughs> oh, Commander. Sorry. They, they're... I'm, this is very disconcerting. I wasn't expecting to find anything, you know, living here. I'm correct, I said, going back to my tricorder. 
we might more things alive here. Um, so, GM, if I need to re-roll for this, I'll do that. But otherwise, uh, can I get that question? Does it look like we could potentially have a hive situation or that these could be eggs? So what your, um, your xenobiology focus will come into play here. Uh, this thing has just laid a bunch of eggs. Uh, judging from its biology, assuming its biology compares to that of other arachnid species, uh, it's given, it's laid the eggs fairly recently. Um, let's see. Yeah, that, I mean, that answer uh, that answers enough there i think um okay. yeah commander uh just laid a not insubstantial number of eggs uh, yeah i think i know what's e uh, what's eating the power right now so what you're saying is i need to ramp up this uh energy distribution and burn them out at the source Oh, uh, that would make a lot of sense, Ensign. That's what I do. Uh, but I do believe that general order something means that we have to try and make contact with these species before, you know, I, you know, maybe start destroying them. It just attacked us. Just do it. Well, now, now, Commander, I... Voice of reason, the ensign is right here, and uh, as if the uh, as if the past couple weeks haven't already taught us, it can be vital to try to understand a species' intentions. If you give me a moment here, I can do a little bit more to try and make sense of its biology, get a sense if there even is a way to communicate, and if not, then I don't know. Figure out something that we can do. I don't know the incubation period on these, so it, as much as I don't like the idea of... Um, it, it's clear that this is a danger to the station, so if, the, if our interest is to preserve that and the discoveries which it might yield, then we may at least want to have this on standby, particularly if they're hostile. Well, I'll just go ahead and get working on that while you do your thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're quick. We are running out of time. Yep. Yeah, you are. Uh, I was just going to int just going to say, uh, thanks to the efforts of the Borg transport system, you did save a lot of time. So you still have about an hour thirty left. Jensen's going to wander off to look for these eggs. Okay. And by what method are you looking for the eggs? Just from the position where it came from, uh, scanning for a uh, uh, similar quantum signature. Okay, we'll get to that momentarily. Um, so, there were two things happening simultaneously with the other group. Uh, Sullivan Barnett's looking, just wanting to do a more thorough examination of the creature. And Usha wants to prepare a massive overload that would make the uh, blackout of New York look like a uh, like someone just flicked a switch, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. So preparing a thing for to complete overload is going to be an extended task. Uh, fairly straightforward extended task, but it doesn't seem right to be make it a single roll. Uh, let's run one second here while I type out what I believe it should do. Take that of three, uh, difficulty of two, and a resistance of, say, one. So work track 10, uh, magnitude three, difficulty two, resist of one for the extended task. Um, which I suspect would be mostly insight or reason and science engineering, some combinations of those. 
but if anyone wants to come up with other options, please let me know. Meanwhile, Sullivan Barnett, this would be a probably a reason medical in this instance, or no, insight medicine. Uh, difficulty of three, given the, the creature's alien and quantum peculiarities. Okay. Anyone care if I take a momentum? By all means, we have five. Yeah. Take all right. Out of my mouth. And yeah, I'm going to uh, trust xenobiology works in this case. Most definitely. Right. And hmm. Let's see. Be absolutely well. Let's see how this roll goes first. Uh, determination can be spent on a re-roll if it goes wrong after. Well, uh, determination could either be spent before the roll to give you two successes, or it could be spent after the roll to re-roll all zeros, if I recall right. You know you what? Any number of die. I. Marcus has enough caffeine in his system, and I think that this second, uh, since we are on the clock with that hour and a half, I want to learn everything I can about this. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to spend a determination. Okay. Uh, which value are you going to give spend? myself? The um, every deadline can be overcome with caffeine and hatred, and that while is... the latter is a it's a bit strong, but I'm not too keen on this thing. Fair enough. Okay, so that's two successes right off the bat, and another two. So you get one momentum out of the deal. All right. Okay, so this creature is obviously not of this particular universe. In fact, you're not entirely sure which universe it's from, or if it's from any universe at all. In fact, it might have more in common with species 8472 whereas it might call a reality that is completely alien to what you typically refer to as home <clears throat> um it seems to gener it seems to travel between universes by generating large amounts of uh quantum uh of energy that sort of disrupts the quantum um bonds that sort of separate the realities from one another um, how it does this seems to just be evolutionary. There doesn't seem to be any sort of intelligent mind behind it. Um, in, in, in short, it, it, it shows no sentient thought rather than uh, a spider just trying to catch prey. Uh, there's all sorts of interesting organs, such as those that generate a bioelectric uh, quantum uns quantum uns unsingularity field for lack of a better term um and despite the fact that it has several eye several organs that appear to be eyes on its front it doesn't seem to actually sense the universe as typical insects do rather it seems to sense changes in energy around it and is drawn to sources of heat power etc rather than you know visual cues or the like um gotcha. yeah okay well presuming in my science officer role i still get the one free uh, nope. obtain okay good um so let's see these or uh, would the like, presuming it is an its organs to essentially burrow through quantum realms, um, does this seem like something that could be susceptible to outside stimuli for it, like, in order to trigger that particular function? Um, are you so you're asking if it can be pointed towards something in general, or if you're a are you? I'm just wondering. If I if I rig a if someone were to rig a techno babble beam of sorts, can I trigger this ah. to just automatically uh, ah, so activate want... within the creature and like send it somewhere else? You basically. want to see if it's possible to dangle a carrot in front of it and have it follow it. 
uh, either that or just like cause an involuntary banishment from my reality because it's crawling and I don't like it. <laughs> that is that would be a very that would require a thorough manipulation of a bunch of organs that even though you have succeeded the task in figuring them out uh, possible yes but it will be a very difficult challenge in order to do so oh I should have brought Galen with us yep. or well, a copy of Galen while uh, Barnett uh, figures that out let's switch to Usha who is currently plugging things together like a mad scientist complete with cackling oh, uh you said it was uh insight science or control yeah. science um, or... let's do insight science i think that's a good one okay let's see it's a difficulty two to start off with i'll take one momentum Well, unfortunately, that is a complication, and I don't have determination, so I have to live with that role. Okay. Um, pardon me. Okay. Um, the console that you're working at uh, spits and sparks and displays several error messages, um, basically stating that um, outside in, outside intrusion into the Borg network has been detected, deploying drones for response and hardening network against future intrusion. Thankfully, there are absolutely no drones, but the network is now hardened where the difficulty becomes a three for future tasks. Joy. All right, well, I mean... Got to try again. Uh, this time I will take uh, three moment. Okay. Oh, there's the three. That's the three. Okay. Uh, so roll the challenge dice. I would like to spend uh, the last momentum to reroll the zero. Yep. We're down to zero momentum now. All right, so hey, that's uh, that's six work. No, I can math. That's seven work done. Mm -hmm. uh, well, six after resistance, and then uh, that's a breakthrough. So the magnitude goes down by one. The difficulty goes down by one, and yeah, this is entirely completable. Yep, absolutely. So let's see. That math is six done. We are now at magnitude two, difficulty two. Uh, you have achieved a, a breakthrough. Uh, not only have you told the Borg network where to stick it, uh, you have isolated the areas which the uh, cluster of eggs appears to be, so the area that's drawing the most amount of power, and have configured the nodes to perform a very precise yet very destructful a series of electric bursts in that area very good well let's see if we can bring this home uh i'm just gonna roll straight 2d20 and hopefully i'll get the successes i did not but no complication yeah. so at this point it would have been six intervals so yeah uh six intervals yeah, I, I haven't given you an interval track on this, so feel free to... I'm just going to assume at this point you just keep going until you succeed. Um, mm -hmm. So, while uh, she does her thing, uh, Michael Jensen, you are wandering ahead of the group, following the yellow string cable. Sounds like someone should write a song about that. <laughs> uh, your plasma rifle is up and ready, and you are twitching at every Borg sound. Um, roughly about 500 meters away from the group. Um, I should ask, is anyone going to say anything to Michael Jensen as he walks away? I should, but I won't. Okay. Uh, about 500 meters away from the original kerfuffle, uh, you find several 
uh, you find several of these strings that are, have uh, intersected into a more geomantic uh, spider web. Uh, hanging from them is a fairly bulbous um, cocoon or egg sac that is dangling about one meter above the floor. Uh, inside you see several uh, uh, several uh, embryonic, I guess, glowing lights moving about. Uh, you are about to do something where you, know, you raise your weapon instinctively when all of a sudden every piece of Borg electronics in the area shoots green lightning bolts at the bloody thing. And the whole place count starts coming around your head. Um, so please roll me a fitness plus security difficulty 2. Or daring security, whichever one you'd like. All right. E. A two. Excellent. Uh, you managed to run away just as uh, several high-pitched screams emanate from the cocoon. The whole thing catches fire in a blue blaze and winks out of existence. Um, as the uh, you are the first to see. Uh, Sort of a cascade series of small uh, flickers as the uh, orange string that has been laid around goes from invisible node to invisible node, uh, catching small puffs, ah, destroying themselves in small puffs of bluish, uh, bluish flame and smoke before traveling on further. Uh, Jensen will walk back. As Jensen walks back, the uh, power systems begin to return to normal around the area. Hmm. And Commander Dolrum, you are receiving a hail from the ca from Captain Crawford. This this is Commander Dolrum, go ahead, Captain. Captain, you see. Uh, the port, uh, the gate is returning to full functionality. Well, whatever your crew is doing over there, it's working. Uh, the gate's returning to normal. Good to hear, Captain. Uh, uh, I managed to get myself a little tangled up, but it seems like the team was working well together. Any com uh, any information about the slip near that went through the gate? Um, is there? Uh, they have been <laughs> delivering their hourly reports. They were informed of the potential possibility of return of having to take the long way home, but nothing uh, nothing has gone wrong per se. Uh, bracer, uh, the bracer ship has reported that its gate has powered on successfully and is beginning an early trip home. Um, nothing bad on my on their end. Uh they're everything's going as planned and the bracer class is actually done early, so they're on their way home. Good to hear. We'll finish up here and be back shortly. Alright. Crawford out. Um so, so all that's left, I think, is the what to do with the spider, the unconscious spider thing that is still in front of you. <laughs> um, when Jensen gets back, he's just going to look at everyone. I was like, so who killed the children? Hmm. Um, was me. What have you guys did to bring back the power killed her eggs? Uh, well... I might as well do this now, and he's just going to press his rifle against the spider's head. Like, it's going to be pissed when it wakes up. It, 
hold on. I've been getting scan. Uh, I've been scanning it to try and determine its biology. There might be some way to sedate or otherwise send it to some alternate form of reality. It's something Maybe I'm some... only scratching the surface of. Where yeah. it what can live in depression? If this is a sentient life form, you killed its kids. Who gave that order? No one wants to speak up? We were exploring different options. I didn't know that we'd just taken the initiative to uh, activate the power spike. No, that that was very specifically. I did not activate it. I was waiting for uh, someone to tell me to activate it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I took this. I took the reins of story away. I'm so sorry. That that falls on me. My bad. <laughs> no, let's roll with it. Yep, it's more interesting that uh, way. The Borg system is ju- it just automatically triggered that once the and that would make sense. Oh. Hmm. Well, congratulations. There's about five kids, if not more, in there. Good Marcus, job, Starfleet. R- Marcus realizes there was probably more than that based on the uh, dans and the number of eggs, so that's going to hit him. We... <sighs> well, considering none of us acted to create the power spike and wondering if the Borg systems naturally reacted to it as a self-repair program. There's still a lot about this place that we don't know. Well, we're going to have one pissed off mother when she wakes up, regardless of how smart or not she is. Well, you aren't wrong there. On that note, I'm going to spend some threat, and the thing starts twitching. Uh, Marcus is immediately backing up. I put my rifle away, and I take two steps back and watch. Okay. I'm standing in front of everybody again. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it stands upright, and... And is going to immediately quick take a quick glance at you. And by now, uh, Sullivan Barnett realizes that it's attempting to use its uh, quantum senses, for lack of a better term, to scan for energies. And it's, it lets out a very shrill scream that causes uh, each of you to momentarily cup your hands to your head, except for Michael Jensen, whose armor protects him from such bursts and it causes several panels to short out nearby just because I think that's funny and unless someone has a science things they'd like to do it's going to try to attack you guys again um, Arnett, can you force it to shift I'll, I'll see what I can do uh, going up to, uh, actually I'm going to run over to uh, one of the Borg interfaces and see whether there's some way that I can maybe okay get in sort of unconventional thinking here. I want to see if there's any way that I can uh, it, like adjust the. Um... Like, adjust the power flow in such a way that... Uh... Okay, so I want to create an advantage. I want to see if there's a way that I can adjust the uh, power flow in this section to rather than be an attractive food energy source, basically to, uh your phrase, sour the milk and like just make this see, uh, make this whole area seem thoroughly it, like okay uh you have no momentum to generate threat so or generate the advantage so i'm going to ass- i'm going to assume i'm you going for a task here oh okay so uh, you're going to do the task for that i mean well if it's possible to pull like a reason science or reason engineering thing for this then 
I can uh, give that a go. Reason Science, and if someone wishes to assist, probably Usha, then that would do. Um, I'm going to say that this will be a difficulty of two. As you've okay. had a lot of experience with the energy systems as of late. Okay. Well, there's two, so there's, you know. Yeah, there's two already. And there's two more successes, so two momentum. Uh, so the bug thing uh, takes two steps towards you, sort of shudders as its energy sort of just sort of spreads out in all directions real quickly before pulling it all into itself and scampers away sort of back towards the main hallway that would lead to this gate. Love it. It's a stop, get, measure, best commander, but I think that uh, that buys us at least a few moments here. Noted. Let's see what we can do, even if, if they come back. I mean, we're going to don't want to yeah. be here or have to find some way to calm it down. I haven't had enough time to fully study the air uh, to study that completely. I'm getting more of a working idea on means that I might be able to influence it, but even then it's it, like to get a full sense of what I might need to sedate or it's a, or trigger the ability. It seems to have to burrow through dimensions or, what have you that there, there's a lot to understand i feel like i would need biology labs dr galen uh, just more resources and not as much time as we have so i mean if you're willing to somehow tranquilize it again and bring it back to the station and somehow convince ember that it's okay there is a xenozoology lab on board the station this is true and i'm and, and you know, that'll be the commander's prerogative, but at this point, I've spent my determination, so I'm treating uh, Sullivan Barnett as a uh, uh, basically nerves frayed and uh, at the, the caffeine and a hatred. <laughs> <laughs> the hallway it ran down, is that towards where it laid its eggs? Uh, no, it's heading towards uh, the area that the uh, lieutenant decided to make more palpable. Or palatable. Okay. So somewhere towards the... I'll, I'll, I'm just saying to, away from all the gates for the time being. Let's section off that area via force fields. It will still have plenty of power and everything around it. And then we can bring back more specialized personnel for this creature luckily it's an insect insects do typically reproduce quickly so call that a lucky thing though sir that just means we're gonna if we don't act quickly we're gonna be caught in the same thing i oh i really should have you uh obtained information on what their uh gestation or incubation period is they are it's asexual <laughs> well we'll Figure it out as we go, as we always do. Okay. <laughs> okay, but so... it also, it also could be just going to nurse its wounds and phase into a different reality. This is completely unknown organism. Let's give it time, and we'll come back and when we're a little bit more suited and see what we can learn as well. Okay. Uh, so first, it sounds like you guys are going to do the containment route. Uh, that would be a series of, um, let's see, yeah, that would be probably control engineering tasks to set things up, possibly control and possibly control security, if you can make that a good, make a good argument for it, and let's say it's a difficulty of three, because that seems appropriate. My control engineering is 13. My control security is 14. I can assist being a um, 
previous head of security, I figure my security stat to create force fields would be a good that would work argument. But if somebody has a much better control engineering or control security, they can take the lead. No, I think you're the winner here. All right. You control also do security. have your determination still. I do. Sure, we'll burn my determination. All the right. finest survive? Yeah, that would work. I'd, I'd say so. Two automatic successes. Would I have a focus with like my tactical systems? Survival composure. I'd give tactical systems. All right, that's two successes uh, on top of the two you already got, so that is one momentum. And you have created a multi-vari a multi-variance force field. Uh, for once using the Borg technology to work for you rather than against you. Um, not only does Borg force fields, not only are they strong as heck, they can also adapt to whatever energy the creature is trying to throw at it in order to break, in order to attempt to break out. If we had a chief, if only Peric hadn't left, it would be a good uh, tactical upgrade for the station to figure this sort of adaptability force field. I'll take notes. Yes. And uh, for the sake of the story, the spider is now fully contained. Uh, it throws itself at the force field a few times uh, before it's just sort of skittering and uh, curling up, pulling its energy close around it and sort of just hiding in a corner for a little while. It's acting like a spider. Yep. Hmm. Not the best solution, but one nonetheless and temporary for now. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody, let's head back to the station. Sounds like a plan, Commander. Uh, you f you find that Ensign Mud has taken the liberty of finding a docking port much closer to your location, and it would only be about a 15-minute uh, trip on foot to get back there. And from there, a 15-minute trip back to the station. Is there anything you guys would like to do en route? I'd like to uh, immediately start setting up a link with uh, the... Uh, any xenobiology labs and possibly like conference and Dr. Galen on this. Um, so, or like so that they start getting files their way and, and the labs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's something that can easily be done in the amount of time it takes to get back to the station. Okay. You guys are. As you guys pull back into the shuttle bay, uh, you will find that the captain is waiting for you. Apparently not patient enough to wait in ops. Uh, shuttle bay is down here somewhere. Jensen walks right past the captain. Hmm. Commander, how'd it go? It's much larger on here than... A success. Although, unfortunate casualties that seem to have been caused by the uh, hub having a self-regulatory system that we did not know about. Hmm. Well, the... And gates at least back to normal, and I that was what we sent you over there to do, so you people did your jobs. Uh, how was Jensen? He was an interesting choice for he wasn't on our initial roster, but seemed like he volunteered to come. Came to observe, 
seemed like he was complaining about every decision that we were making, but I feel like that's going to be his role in everything right at the moment. Hmm. Well, if he did his job, then I guess I can't really complain. He could show a little bit more appreciation. I did kind of step in front of an energy blast for him. Oh, that's the brain for you, but... Yeah. He'll (laughs) either um, go along with us or figure out that he is against an entire station... Yeah, and uh, Ensign Usha, I see that you're new to the station, but you seem to do some upstanding work. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Yes, Usha's expertise was invaluable with this. Glad to hear. Uh, For those of you who are wanting to join me, I'm planning on going to celebrate at the eclipse if any of you want to come. And Nia, at that propagation, he promptly walks to a turbo lift and goes to wherever engineering is. He doesn't want to handle Ember trying to give him another shot. (laughs) Captain, I would love to join, but I think I'm going to turn in for the evening. I have a family waiting. (laughs) <laughs> of course, Commander. Lieutenant I... Ensign? Sorry, Captain. I need to get down to Xenozoology right away. We, uh, uh, we've we got a lot to figure out with this creature if we're going to get it out of there as safely as possible. As a matter of fact, I should, pro- um, I should probably go down and see if Dr. Galen's made it that way or if he's analyzing information in sickbay and Marcus is going to walk off, hang his communicator. Uh, so also, be sure to uh, let me know uh, when we get the requisite personnel down there. Yes, sir. Uh, and the birth of a new character uh, purely by... Uh... <laughs> purely out of necessity. I'll pick yes. him up at some point in the near future. And on that note, I believe that's a good place to end the episode, unless there are folks who want to do wrap-up scenes? Uh, yeah, I actually had one with Galen and Ember. Ah, okay. Where would you like this to be? Wherever she'd like to meet. Okay. Uh, I mean, if if you're just going to surprise her, then wherever's fine, really. Uh, he's, he'll he'll uh, radio up to her. He'll call up and ask where she's at. I'd probably be in the security room overseeing people sparring in the boxing ring that we have. Yeah, then he'll uh, walk on over. Right. Okay. So, and Ember is busy watching and giving very helpful tips to those who are sparring. And in walks Commander Galen. Master Chief? Yes, Doctor. What can I do for you? I was reviewing the last away mission you're on, especially your uh, neat idea to reverse use my hollow emitter. So I drafted up a couple of ideas. And he'll hand her a pad. It Take it and look at it. Makes use of a neural interface for uh, thought control and a neural transducer to immobilize your physical body while giving you tactile sensation in the holographic body. This should allow you to be able to operate and maneuver around just like you were really there. Hmm. An interesting proposal. Thank you for this. And I just sort of put it aside, but it's not like I'm throwing it away. I'm like putting it aside because, you know, I can't carry it on my person at the moment. Have a good day. You too, doctor. 
And next time, call ahead before you show up in security. Oh. I'll make sure to remember that next time as well. And I just returned to saying, Ramirez, keep your left side up. No, you're dropping. Do I have to come in the ring and do it myself? No, sir. Please, not again. Good, right, you learn quickly. Ensign Ramirez, that's now a thing. Okay. Anyone else? No, but I'm going to make Ensign Ramirez in charge of spider things, so... You know. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'll give him an arachnophobia mm. trait. I'll, t- I'll toss it up there. Uh, Jensen's in the club, if anyone wants to join there. But that's open. Uh, I think I'm good on my end. Very well. All right, then we shall call the session here, folks. Thank you so much. And for those of you listening on stream, thank you very much. And for those of you who are catching this on ELH's channel... I'm so glad that you are are with us, and hopefully we will have many more fun episodes to come. Um, our next planned episode will be Friday the 14th of June at 6 p.m. Pacific. So, goodbye everyone. See you next time.